All right, all right. Hey there, StarCraft. <coughs> StarCraft fans, there we go. It is Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. It's going to be the Sunday stream. And you know that because you are here. Woof. <clears throat> Had to take care of something with the cat, so I'm a little bit late. But she's okay. All right, so... Got Aki here. We've got Dead Infested, Barbu, Dog with a Blog, Christian, Omar Ali, Nemo New, Mr. Imperfect, who also sh watches me on Twitch. We've got Bill K. We've got Corey Lee, Vincent Galapu, Altair, who is a member of the channel. What's up, Altair? RJB TV. You know that guy. We've got ourselves Dave C., uh, current Chaos Goblin. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. Farewell, who's also a member of the channel. We've got John Doe under his name, D22SDA. Joseph Orbino, who leaves very interesting and weird comments on my videos. Dun, 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 dun. Upload good TVZs, says Joseph. Okie doke. Nibbler here, also a member of the channel, sent me a replay this week, too. Fantastical. Ba -ba -da -ba. Ogre Breed, which is a new name. Don't recognize that one. Gamer Eye. Squiz Squad. Sonyo. Looney007. Yeah, all right. All right, all right. We got some good uh, good participation here. Some excellent people are ready to go. So, as always, we're going to go to the folder where in my replays that people have sent to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Brood War Live. Okay, we're in this uh, June 26th folder. If you want me to cast your replay, it doesn't have to be pro, doesn't have to be anything really. Just send it to me at falconpaladin, gmail.com, subject brood war. It'll go into this folder. We'll take a look at it. Is that a two? What on earth? Oh, there we go. That's the Barbu two hour free for all. I don't know. Maybe we have time for that one today. We'll take a look. I think we will maybe give it a try. We also have. Oh, that's another Barbu one hour. AI game. So we'll do one of the two there. How about that, Barbu? Uh, I'm just not sure how much super interest there is in the AI games at this point. It's, uh, da -da 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 -da. it's an hour. Wow. Hour and seven minute long fastest map. Got a dungeon game with the carry. So a 31 minute fastest map. Dungeon. Oh, Dungeon Dame. Sorry. Dungeon Dames there. Got a Nibbler 3v3 quickie. We've got another fastest here. Uh, 2v2 with Lucky Owl. You know what? Let's do that. Let's start it off with a 2v2 on Lucky Owl. Oh, Dead sent me a replay after the stream started? Let's see if we can get that. Oh, we can get that. Oh my gosh. The name alone is interesting. All right, here we go. Boop, boop. Okay, so Team North versus Team South here. Top right, going to be Yufli, who is a pink Zerg player. And on the left side, it's a, a purple Protoss, a Lucky Owl. Team South, dude is Obi-Wan. Hey, just finished watching Obi-Wan. That uh, first season or series wrapped up last week. And then on the south side, his teammate is going to be a Grey Zerg player. Pepe's. So we're going to go Pepe's here. Okay, so Lucky Owl in the house. He's playing his beloved Protoss. He's very good at it. Team Zerg and Terran down south here too. Tententu. Yeah, good, good, good. All right, this should be an interesting 2v2 here. Lucky Owl is a good player. The APMs are on 160 right now. Not that there's much for him to do, but he can, you know, get that fast. He's going to go ahead and open up Gateway. Not expanding yet. Getting a second pylon. Which is intriguing. I don't know what the purpose of the second pylon is, actually. On the other side, a macro hatch. It's a big game hunters, right? So you got double gas inside your main. So Zergs don't have the compulsion to make an expansion real fast, which is nice for them. Zergs prefer playing on uh, big game hunters rather than just regular hunters for that very reason. You can go one base Muta on this map. I haven't... Man, if I cast a game on big game hunters for a while... 
I don't know. I feel like I've cast a ton of games on Hunters, but Big Game Hunters has not been... Not really been a thing, interestingly enough. Yeah, so defensive sunken up for the Zerg. They're basically going for the same builds here. Except for the second gas that's been taken by uh, Pepe's. So, got some Lings out. But again, defensive sunken, so the timings are pretty great. Gonna show up with Ling, gonna show up with Zealots and try to kill probably the Zerg player. Be my guess. Let's go... Yeah, there's a Lair coming up at 6, he says. Let's go take him down. And Lucky Owl says, all right, let's move. So there's two Sunkins versus three Zealots and about eight Zerglings. I don't know. They maybe should be both be attacking the same Sunken. But it works out in the end. They kill both the Sunkins. There are kind of two Zealots left. I don't know. Two Zealots actually very much left. Yeah, I mean, ugh, can you get away with making zero Zerglings in the first five minutes of a team game? Maybe not. Maybe not at all. Oh, more Zealots coming in from Lucky Owl. And Zealots against Drones is just the toughest. It is the toughest of battles for those poor Drones. All right. Well, is he helping? Like, come on, man. All right. We got our guy over here, Obi-Wan. He's got his Marines, got his medics, but I think it's too late. Somehow there's still seven Drones down here, but not for very long because, hey, the Lynx found him. There's already a Zealot in here causing all sorts of trouble. Dude's got nine kills to his name. Ah, absolutely insane. Yeah, all right. So that's going to be it. Zero workers, and if you kill this hatchery, the Zerg player is out. Help, says Euphly. I'm getting Marine attacked. You got two Sunkins up. You got three Sunkins up. I think you're going to be fine. You're gonna be fine. All right, cool. So our guy is dead. Kill this hatchery. And then the Zerg player is toast because he doesn't have enough money to rebuild a hatchery and he has, or, and he has no drones anyway, so he's done. He is donezo. Uh, all right, so Marines attacking into Sunkins with Ling support though. Yeah, that's with the Sunken support. Mm, okay, so that crushes. All right, it's Terran. So now you are in a 2v1 scenario. You do have 21 workers, but your teammate or your enemies have 14 and 15 workers, and combined, their economies are better than yours. I like the bunker play. I like additional barracks being produced here. Maybe getting some vultures out would be pretty hot against this whole, you know, Zergling Zealot situation, but hey, it's cool. Yeah, he was trying to go for like a one base Hydra push, or maybe some. Oh, you know what? Probably lurkers. He was trying to rush lurkers, but. Nope. That's not happening, is it? Okay, so he just gets utterly straight up eliminated. Now, here's the thing. I think you can, guys can just win right now. You got a good number of Lings, good number of Zealots. Sure, there's a bunker, but a bunker is not going to be enough to keep him alive. Hmm. So we're going to poke it and see what we're doing here. Zealots attacking into a million marines. They do kill a marine, but then they sum summarily get executed themselves. Oh, interesting. I'm going to throw up a forward pylon here. What else are we doing? Getting upgrades. Still making zealots, man. Just kidding. <laughs> getting plus one attack for the said zealots. The lings don't have any upgrades coming in for them. Aspire's on the way. Evolution chamber exists, but it's not being used for much of anything at all. At the moment. So, yeah, I mean, Terran Bud. Yeah, has what it takes. Well, all these lings died for a marine. All that for a drop of blood. Okay, we're just kind of donating zealots at this point. Okay, suddenly. Suddenly, stim marines with medics are looking really nice. Yeah, forward pylon shenanigans. No, says Obi-Wan. Zealots? No. Okay, one Marine died there, but suddenly it's 61 supply. And our Terran buddy's doing some work. But could he just straight up... It's a lot of Sunkins. I think he could straight up kill Lucky Owl for sure. He's got a handful of Zealots here. But if he moves out too far, then maybe more Lings come pouring in. Maybe Mutalisks show up. He's getting turrets. He has an engineering bay. Is he getting turrets, though? Ah, this might be a situation where the Terran straight up just has six mutas show up and everybody dies. 
Or the Zerg player straight up dies to this kind of an attack. Oh, I don't know. That's a lot of sunkens, man. That is potentially a lot of sunkens. It's more Marines than usual. But he already can... Can you attack? Yeah, so try to attack here without taking shots from these two sunkens. And maybe you can get this thing. Huh? 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 No, that sunken pop. That sunken popped. That sunken pop. That sunken's dead. He's got three more sunkens to deal with, and he's dropping marines like flies. Yeah, I mean, so the sunken dies. The mutas can't really stand in there and fight that either, though. Okay, so yeah, the sunkens did the work there. The zerg player did enough with the static defense. And there we go. Dragoon zealots show up. Mutalisks working together. Yeah, it gets wiped out. No mutalisks, no further mutas die in the making of that defense. But yeah, it took five sunkens and a little bit of support from the Protoss teammate to deal with that push. That was really strong. So, Obi-Wan, again, this poor SCB's been stuck back here for a while, hasn't he? How did you get back here, guy? How did you... Oh, okay. Maybe he came from building these supply depots and got walled in. Entirely possible. Yeah, it would be weird if this 2v1 at the Terran wins. That'd be, man, super questionable. I don't... It would really require the Terran to possibly be significantly better than his enemy. They look a turret's up. Not protecting the mineral line, though. Yeah, all right. Well, I don't know. Marines are coming down here. They can be temporary missile turrets. That turret's at a pretty good position. SCV trying to build ye old factory here. Yeah, Nimo Numas, do you guys prefer fantasy historical RTS or sci-fi futuristic RTS? Well, we're all here for StarCraft, so I think we all really enjoy futuristic sci-fi stuff. But I don't know. I definitely have a super soft spot. Thank you for subscribing, Diego Ramirez. A soft spot for Warcraft 2. Really like Warcraft 2. Really like Warcraft 3. Warcraft 3 is a lot of fun in a lot of ways. But I definitely spend more time with StarCraft. So, I don't know. I guess my answer has to be futuristic, right? Okay, so trying to save his teammate again. The Dragoons, I don't know about their usefulness here. They got upgrades, which is nice at least. The Marines not even really microing, they're just kind of standing in and kicking butt and taking names right now. Oh yeah, these guys aren't even attacking this dragoon. Uh oh. Lucky old might find himself in a 1v1. Good luck, says Youfly. I'm toast. Dude, stay in. See, look, he's got another base, a secret base. He's only got five drones, but it's better than zero. He's not eliminated. Uh, why are you sending Dragoons in like this? Yufli says we're both dead. He has too much. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You got your splash damage? Nope. Are you teching up to splash damage? No. Urgh. We're at 12 minutes. Lucky Owl. I know the feel. I know you're like, well, I've been winning with Zealots and Dragoons. They're great. And they are. There you go. You need Storm or DTs or something. Agreed. Super agreed. Jedi mind trick in the house. What's up, Jedi? How's your Sunday going? Hope it's excellent and wonderful and fun. But of course, it's a Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Okay, so I mean the problem here for our dude is he's up here hanging out. He needs to regroup with all of the Marines and medics down here. 87 supply right now for this dude. He just went for all of the racks on, again, one base because it's big game hunters and you can do these kind of shenanigans. Yeah, these cannons aren't going to do all that much. Does he have upgrades for these guys yet? He's got plus one attack. He's working on plus one armor. Ooh, he's making double starport. That's intriguing. Plus, he's got double fac here, too. 
Hmm. Yeah, see, look, he doesn't know. He doesn't know about this base. And Euphilee's got some money, too. You flee, come back from the... No, he's calling it over. The cannons are not enough. Oh, no. Lucky Al calls the GG and check this out. Barbu. Woo. You were right. You're like, what if the Terran wins this? And I was like, nah. But then he did. He's got 200 APM. He just made billions of Marines and Medics on one base. Again, it's big game hunters. doesn't really count as one base. Yeah, he had six racks. Six racks, nothing but marines and medics. He had double starport going for some reason and double factory with some tank support coming up later if he needed it. But yeah, in 13 minutes, if there's no splash damage for these dudes, no lurkers, no storm, then yeah, marine medic's just going to win the day. Really cost eff effective for sure. How's it going, Alexander Spefnev? Uh, Baru's happy the Terran player won. I mean, he had 323 APM, so... Probably significantly better than the other players in the game. Understandably so. He killed 104 units. I mean, yeah. Twice as much as anybody else. Outspent everybody by a wide margin. There was a little bit of mutilous harassment there, but not enough to really slow him down by any stretch. Crazy. Absolutely impressive show there. Lucky Owl sends in a loss. Lucky Owl. Thumbs up, man. Crazy, crazy. Just again, I respect anyone who sends in a loss. I'm not saying only send in losses, but I'm saying if you send in replays on a significant frequent basis, if you slip in a loss in there every once in a while, then we don't know if you're going to win the game we're about to watch. It's nice. All right. RJB is in the house. Oh, Sonic Erotica versus Dead Infested. Oh, dead. <laughs> oh, dead. Okay. So... Where is this one? Dungeon Dame. Is RJB in this game? What's up, JLC? That's right. Hit that thumbs up button. We're doing all right. 30 likes. I think more people can help with that. Did you say that you're in this game, RJB? Under one of your myriad always updating, always changing Smurf names. Possibly. Yeah, I don't know. Let's do it. Let's do it anyway. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Happy Sunday, all. I uh, went to one of my sister's weddings last night. That was a lot of fun. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so I got two sisters married in the same year. When did my other sister get married? I think it was... Time has no meaning anymore, but it was in the last 12 months. So, yeah. Who's unmarried at this point? Uh, my two younger brothers. My two youngest brothers aren't married yet. And that's fair. One of them is 18, and one of them is like 22. So, they've got some time before they uh, really start getting serious about that, I would say. RJB. Okay, so now i got to figure out who RJB is. Is he away team? One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Maybe. Is he I'm yes, yes? Maybe. The APMs are kind of matching up there. Anyway, these players are as follows. A red Protoss named Sonny Sun. We've got Dungeon Dame. And then away team. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. So Protoss, Protoss, Terran team. Team two is a Protoss purple. Zello, 0808. We've got a pink Protoss named In My Eyes. And then rounding us off, a white Protoss named In Your Eyes. So, I don't know. Are they teammates? They got to know each other, right? There's no way they randomly got put on the same team when their name is In My Eyes and In Your Eyes, all lowercase. Come on. Come on. So, yeah, the fun game is always who is RJB in this match. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we try to figure it out and we can't. Until the very end, we don't know who he is. So play along with me at home, everyone. If you, you know, want to type in a guess into chat, you can. If you can't type into chat because you're watching this on your Roku, then that's cool. Just play along at home. Ah, figured it out. Figured out this cannon rush was happening. So Bucker gets tossed up immediately. Marines are already in production here now. Dungeon Dame says, K. 
Ooh, Farewell says maybe it's our dude away team here. Who's playing Terran? Who's our JB? Very possible. Agreed. Meanwhile, so many enemy zealots coming in to cause problems. I mean, this is annoying. Yeah, marines with stim and medic support are incredible against zealots. Not as good if nothing has upgrades. The zealots are pretty strong in the upgraded versus or the unupgraded versus unupgraded battle. Oh, little defensive zealot play here from Sony Sun trying to assist, but he gets triple teamed and murderized. Another zealot from Sony Sun comes in, does his very level-headed best, gets a kill, but outnumbered, but fighting with the zealots is going to help a lot. Also, who else is here? Somebody else is helping here. That's nice. Okay, so Terran's under attack. His two Protoss teammates are assisting. I mean, obviously, it's got to be red and yellow who are in here. Yeah, so the yellow zealots are friendly, and the red zealots are friendly. So the colors of the sun. Yeah, bunkers up. Cannons firing away at it, though. Might not live forever. This is nuts. This is a pretty crazy, crazy dangerous situation for the Terran player to be in. The bunker gets focused down. There are fire bats here, and there are medics healing the aforementioned fire bats. So maybe, but my gosh, the zealots pouring in from everywhere because everybody else in this game is a Protoss. So some are friendly, and some are enemies. Hey, what's up, Dean? I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Greetings from London. Is that Ontario, Canada? Oh, it's London, Canada. Right. Look at who threw up defensive cannons here, too. Sony Sun did. Oh, but if he loses this pylon, these cannons will be depowered. That would be terrible. Yeah, this is an interesting little cannon spread here that Zell's rolling with. More Zealots rolling in here from Dungeon Dame. They got my probe, says Sonny. And I'm going to lose this pylon, and then these cannons will be depowered. But they're doing work for now. They're helping keep everybody alive for now. Do the academy... Oh, the range upgrade has to be canceled. Oh, my gosh. This is terrible. This is terrible for the Terran player. He needs a siege tank in the worst possible way. He's getting a machine shop. He's very close to having a siege tank in the worst possible way. Dude, kill this pylon. Why are you... Okay, fine. A supply depot dying is neat. Ooh, okay, free fire bats good, too. Finally, this pylon gets taken down. Zealot on zealot action over here. Well, it looks like a lo most of these are enemies. I don't know. Can this Terran hold on? Oh, he got another... He got... Okay, so these are depowered, but he got another probe in, so he's throwing up more pylons. The cannons will be back on the line shortly. Nibbler used to date a Canadian. I did not know that. So all the actions bent here on away team one two one. I don't think anyone's been attacked anywhere else at all on the map. All the other Protoss have been very happily making their gateways. You know, getting up Reaver Tech, making probes. They're fine. It looks like the Terran is stabilized, and Team Enemy, Team Protoss here, has decided to go after Dungeon Dame. Who does have some cannons defensively set up. A bunch of zealots here, too. I don't know, man. There are a lot of enemy zealots here. Definitely getting double teamed, if not triple teamed in the face. Are there enough? Oh, Nick T is Sonny's son. Oh, and away team is our JB. We've gotten an answer. Nick T's in a replay. I don't remember the last time we saw a Nick T replay, if ever, but nice defense there from Dungeon Dame. Cannons, Zealots, Cannons in good positions, right? Cannons out here don't do nearly as well as Cannons right snug up against your buildings, being protected by other buildings, alright? Very smart, but yeah, Storm's on the way from Dungeon Dame. Sunny Sun's got more Dragoons in the house. Siege tanks are up with siege mode. So this is where Terran gets a little bit dangerous against enemy Protosses. Is when they start pumping them tanks. That said, it's going to be more Marines here too. 
Ah, uh, zealots from Dungeon Dame trying to go home. Just taking cannon shots. Ow. Ow. Loses one of their dudes. Carriers? Says Sunny Sun. Says Nick T. RJP is the Phantom. That's right. He's been revealed. I think, you know, it was a fair guess. He'd be the only Terran in the house. That was a really solid defense, too, from him. He definitely need help. Need dead help. Oh, did he get stormed? Did he just have a DT one or a... Oh my gosh, 24 kills. Yeah, fair enough. Big attack showed up from enemy, uh, enemy Protus. Yeah, RJB is unhappy because his build or his building placement is a total mess. I don't, oh, storm drop. Okay, that was successful. Away team 34. Mm, some SABs died, but pretty good pull there from RJB nevertheless. Wow, ton of Dragoons out from Sunny Sun. Center is largely held by the enemy, though. So, I'm, I mean, trying to go anywhere in this situation is going to be real difficult. Because, by golly, enemy Zealots, enemy Dragoons are here. They are just... Got a, a pretty good stutter step here from Nick T, for sure. Yeah, Zealots coming out from Dungeon Dame to try to assist in this. This is largely just a massive PvP. With some RJB thrown in the mix for a little bit of chaos. Yeah, leaving the base was a tough situation. Dungeon Dame, maybe gonna go for an attack down here on In Your Eyes. I see it. I see the potential here. Also, trying to head up is in my eyes. Oh man, simultaneous drops are happening. Great storm! Oh, beautiful storm there on In Your Eyes. Down to 13 probes. And then another decent storm here against Dungeon Dame. 13 probes for him, too. So Sunny Sun's at 17. 13 for Dungeon Dame. In your eyes at 13. Oh, this is definitely PvP in a nutshell, man. This is a ton of drops and harassment and going after them probes. In fastest map, it's especially true. But in 1v1 PvP, it's also very true. It's hilarious how many drops there are. Generally. Hmm. In your eyes is trying to make a counterattack here against Dungeon Dame. Who has the best economy right now? It's 46 and 47 in my eyes, and uh, RJB have the biggest economies. Zell's doing all right, too. He hasn't been dropped yet. Dungeon Dame says one, which just means defend me. Avenge me. I'm under direct attack here by the enemy. They want me dead. Is that shuttle empty? Yes, it is. Okay. Another drop attempt here on RJB. Oh, right here. Right here. Yeah, see, that's the importance of SCD pulling, worker pulling. Is the enemies that storm drop you in are just going to target the mineral patch. And if your SCVs are out, it takes a very good Protoss player to storm where the SCVs are rather than where they were and where they normally are. Another drop sneaking in. No! Gets absolutely shut down. Storm's a cannon. Pretty good pro pull down here, too. This is not bad. This is some pretty high-level StarCraft fastest map, for sure. Everybody seems to generally know what they're doing. How's it going, Anthony? Welcome to the stream. You go by Anthony, and you go by Tony. Got another drop, heading up to Sunny Sun's base. It's a really good unload, man. Where's your storm is at? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's 26 probes. Yeah, there you go. Doing some storm work there. There are only, like, four probes on minerals right now. No! Nick T. Nick T is in all of the trouble right now. Some of his probes were off planet. I don't know what that's all about. There, I mean, not off planet, but like away from the base. Maybe they got rallied in here by accident. Oh no, he's throwing up pylons and stuff. Right on, right on. Finally clearing out the Protoss infestation in his base now is RJB. Got a sneaky shuttle here with Dungeon Dame. A single High Templar is in it. You know, he easily could sneak down here. Get a storm off. 
there aren't any cannons on this northern section. That is a problem. I'd really recommend maybe having some kind of static air defense surrounding your, your mineral patch here. Because if you don't do that... Uh, these shuttles took some extra hits already. I don't know if there's any success rate for them. Marine tank. Marines here. Cannons here. Okay. Dead. Any storms? Yeah, one storm, but RJB with the SCV pull. I don't think he lost any workers there at all. That's dead impressive. That was truly fantastic. Way to go. Okay, so people are rebuilding their economy. Sunny Sun's back up to 32 in your eyes. Uh, back up to 61. Dang, fantastic. I and mean, he's got, what, four Nexuses. Four Nexuses helps you rebuild your probe count fairly well. It just does. Dungeon dames into house. Just an absolute beeline for this. Okay, he's back down to 18 workers. That was sick. Sick killer drop there. And then hmm, Sunny Sun's under attack here too. Oh, no. Down to five probes. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The massacre on the left side. I, as soon as I say, people are rebuilding their economies. Bam, in your eyes and Sunny Sun get knocked down to the ground. I land, let's draw, we win easy. I don't, a dungeon dame? I'm not sure there's a we win easy situation here. All right, so we're gonna have a big battle in the middle. Our guys, in my eyes and in your eyes, making a push. Again, only Sunny Sun is here. He's kind of alone. Dungeon Dame attacking to the middle would help. RJB maybe moving his tanks to the middle would help too, but he doesn't have a lot of them. It's not really a tank count where you can hold middle here. Woo! So we're going after Sunny Sun, who, you know what? Fair. His economy is the worst. He's been dropped the hardest so far, or at least he's taken the most damage from being dropped. Jedi, sounds good, man. Love you. Have a great Sunday. Take care of yourself, dude. Oh, come help. You gotta help. There's so much pink here. He's 197 supply. RJP's maxed out. Where is... Okay, he's got some more tanks than I thought he did. But uh, there's not a ton of production here from Nick T. Mm, everybody. Everybody gonna die. Uh, plus one, plus one for, R or for Nick T. Plus two, plus one, plus one. For enemy pink units. Enemy white zealots are at plus two, plus two, plus one. Just different upgrades, but generally the same thing. RJP sends in some tanks. All right, I gotta help you, buddy. I'm not, I can't spare my entire army, but let's send in some siege tanks against this master goon stuff. Not a bad idea. Is it enough to save Nick T? I'm not convinced that it is because there are so many dragoons here. The siege tanks are good, but they don't have any upgrades. And against upgraded dragoons, tanks less effective. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the tanks, you know, like I had one kill. A little embarrassing, I guess, to only have the one kill. Nick T lives because he's got cannons in RJB's base. He also has, oh no, not enough money to build a new Nexus. Nick T has just been obliterated and eliminated from the game. Yeah, he done. That's it. Needed more assists. Needed more help. From his teammates. What is going on? It's a fleet beacon. And, of course, Corsair production happening here from our guy Dungeon Dame. Oh, okay. Disruption web on the way from Dungeon Dame, too. Makes sense. Big drop on RJB. Good SCV pull, though. See, but storming here. Harder. It's harder. That's how you keep your stuff alive, man. Yeah, put an F in chat for Nick. <laughs> that didn't come out right, says farewell. No, no it did not. So now RJB is under attack, but this is, by golly, a lot of plus one tanks now. They have upgrades. Bueno, Amarillo. Uh, breaking through here as a Protoss is going to be a tall order. It would take a lot of sustained attacking to do this. And I just don't see it. I just don't see it. The Protoss don't have sustained attacks here. They're not streaming, you know, 17 Zealots and 18 Dragoons at a time, which is a 
what you can do fastest map level wise is just absolutely stream nothing but gateway units in here until the end of time but maybe the macro is not quite good enough for this team protoss right maybe in your eyes and my eyes maybe zell who i've been you know, pretty quiet about him he's doing all right that's some decent setup here Dungeon Dame. You know, an attack on Dungeon Dame, I think, might have worked. And might actually still work right now. But, you know, that's sometimes what StarCraft is. Is sometimes you could die, or you could kill your opponent in a window. But if you don't know that, or your opponent doesn't know that, then it doesn't matter. You're not going to die, right? Ah, here we go. Here we go. So all this northern stuff from Dungeon Dame is dead. I really do think just a regular push here on Dungeon Dame would kill him. He does not have a ton. He's at 164 supply. Does he have better upgrades? He's got two one upgrades. No, he doesn't. Enemy Protoss has better upgrades than he does. Well, I guess with the exception of Purple, who's at 111. So maybe not the strongest Protoss player here. This is a giant drop. Attack on Dungeon Dame does sound like an anime title, 100%. 100%. We've got 100 viewers. That's pretty fantastic. And... I think I unloaded two Dragoons on that drop. Not the greatest I've ever seen, no. Yeah. I, mm, I feel like the best choice of action here is to just wipe out Dungeon Dame and then worry about RJB later. And he is wandering some tanks out, but he's got to unseage him to move him, and that makes him vulnerable. Yeah, RJB is moving out, right? He's got the tanks. He's got Goliaths now. He doesn't have any Zealots, or rather Vultures, which is a problem because the Zealots exist. And once the Zealots jump on top of these tanks, that tank count's going to get whittled down for sure. Yeah, so tank down, tank down, I mean quickly too. Tank down, tank down, tank down, tank down, tank down. Yeah, this tank count getting a little bit removed. Not all of it. We still have these tanks back here, which is nice. Is that a drop that just got absolutely shut down? Yes, it was. Is there a drop down here? There is. Dungeon name. Nice, beautiful storm here on Zello. He's got down to 40 probes. Not like he's down to 10 or anything, but still pretty problematic. And <laughs> Oof, RJB tries to leave his base, gets shut down. Not happening. <clears throat> Dungeon Dame drops for MVP this game, says Omar Ali. Yeah, he's been doing really well here as far as that goes. But once again, I just don't. Hey, what's up, Bulls? Yeah, after I cast a game, I put it into a folder called Already Cast. That's pretty much it. Good storm there, too. Woo, hit your eyes, knocked down to 10. Pro That's what I'm talking about. Nine probes. Oh, yeah. Nick T impressed by that. Everyone's impressed by that. And then Dungeon Dame moves out. Feeling strong. So yeah, sometimes though, I'll get multiple replay packs from Team Liquid or something. And, you know, three different packs will have the same game in it because it's amazing and it gets included, right? And so in that case, I really just have to rely on me remembering if I've cast this game before. And sometimes if I get the feeling I've cast a game before, I'll go back and just check my YouTube library. And I can search for, you know, search for anything. Search by name, search by map search by different comments and I'll just be like if I ever cast these two players if I ever cast Ample versus Rain before and then I find that list if I cast them on this map and sometimes yeah I've cast these two players on this map and then I have to go in and look if the colors are the same and if the spawn location is the same because sometimes there's definitely been times where I thought I've cast this game before 
because uh, it's the same players on the same map. But no, it's actually an entirely different game because they have different colors or different spawns. So it's a little bit tricky. And every once in a while, I do recast a game that I've cast already on the channel, but not super often. How's it going, Violent Vegan? It's Terran making nukes, says Barbu. I don't know, but we've got mind control on the way from Dungeon Dame. He might go for his own personal Terran army here soon. Ah, the carriers have arrived. They're going after RJB. They got his main command center. That hurts. It's not game ending, but it definitely hurts. Yeah, so look, there are definitely Goliaths here. He's definitely pumping 10 Goliaths at a time and making Valks. But... He just got absolutely bopped by this carrier group. Yeah, fair enough, man. In My Eyes has been working on this for a while. He's got one, two, one upgrades on these. In Your Eyes, whoa, says let's take down three. He honestly, fair. He doesn't have a lot. RJB's got, I don't know, some Goliaths and a couple tanks back here. There's a couple tanks up here, too. Dungeon Dame is second probes. He's got some serious plans of making Corsairs, and he's got Reavers for further and future Reaver drops. Did the car wait, 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 wait. Did the carriers all die? There were a bunch here a second ago. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the whole Valkyrie Goliath thing totally worked out. Look at those Valkyries taking down a carrier. Yes. Yes. Tech that body. Get him. Get him. Get him good. Didn't we talk last week about how there's a bug where Valkyrie attacks don't kill interceptors? This is a good test for it, honestly. No, well, I think it is. I think an interceptor just died. I don't know. I don't know what to think anymore. Bo Oliver doesn't like carriers. There's a whole bunch of them here. Drop attempt. Dungeon Dame. The droppiest dropper that ever dropped today. Reverse! Unloading. In my eyes... Really good storm defense, though. Holy crap. I don't think he lost any probes there at all. Oh, hold on. Hold on. There's still a Reaver here, though. He's still... Not... What? I thought he cleared... What? Ah! The Reaver is preventing... There we go. Any mining from happening for that mineral patch, but it's over now. There you go. SCV mind controlled for RJB. I heard the sound. Where is it? Or RJB's got mind controlled. You know what I'm talking about. I mind controlled you, says Dungeon. <laughs> do, 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 104 viewers. Fantastic. 40 total likes. Always good. Yeah, this is a pretty good game. Center is being held by tanks now from RJB, which has been 27 minutes in. We haven't seen that very much yet, but it's great. Dungeon Dames up to 201 total supply. There we go. 201. You know the mind control shenanigans that happen now. What's up, Dan Buddha? All right. Carriers in to attack. Three shields and two armor. These are very tough carriers. Very mean. Oh, another drop, though. Dungeon Dame says, well, I've gone after Zello in a while. Zello, how would you like to have your experience of all of your probes dying? 
31 probes remaining. Had about 70 there, so that's a 40 probe kill. Not bad on the storm at all. Not bad, not bad. Drops amazing. Hey, thank you for the subscription here from Shirt. Or Seabert, rather. Misread that one. Seabert, thanks for joining and subscribing to the channel. We're here every Sunday doing this stuff. Also, regular VODs. Uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. It's a lot of StarCraft on the channel, yo. Man, I don't know about this. I said that earlier, though. The last carrier attack on RJB did not kill him. So, will this one is the question. Soon, uh, says Dungeon Dame. Ooh, he's making some of them scouts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we're here for is them scouts. Marines doing their best. Ooh, pretty good stasis. Okay, that cut that carrier group about in half. Another drop, man. All right, in your eyes. What do we got? In your eyes. The light, the heat, your eyes, I am complete, your eyes. This is bad. This is really bad for in your eyes. He just lost two of his four nexuses. He's down to two total probes. Dude, Dungeon Dame, honestly, with the drops. Sick. Utterly sick. Just some of the most impressive dropping for sure that we've seen. Is he going to go for round two? No. He's just wandering over to die to cannons. Free up that supply, baby. Yeah, it's Valkyries fighting for their lives. Are there some turrets in here? I, there's some turrets up north, yeah, but... Dude, RJB is all the way down to 147 total supply. Wait, says Dungeon Dame. My Reavers are continuing to murder in your eyes. So in your eyes might just get... Removed here. Is it 39 total supply? There's not a lot going on at all. Hey, Andreas Holby remembers for nine months. Re ups that membership. The Ultralisk roars its approval. What's up, Andreas? Hey, guys. Yeah, these carriers are getting kind of wiped out with the combination of the Valkyries and the Corsairs and the Goliaths. Don't forget about the Goliaths. Doing tons of work there, too. Yeah, Andreas, hit that join button down below. You can as well. Becoming a member of the channel for just a couple bucks a month. I think it's literally 199 is the lowest level. In my eye, oh, in my eyes left the game. In your eyes said noob, so maybe they're not teammates. Yeah, who? One opponent left, says Dungeon Dame. We got this thing. And Zello taps out GG2. Dungeon Dame throws out the bad manner. <laughs> With an easy. I don't know why they quit, says Zell. I killed his main. Well, you killed. Did you kill in my eyes his main? Nope. Zell's real mad at his teammates. I get it. I'd be mad at him too if they just bailed and I didn't feel like they should. <laughs> GG. Hold on real quick. I gotta see something. Was there some kind of massive attack on white? Gotta relive the chat here. Oh, pink, I mean. I know there was a huge attack on white, but what about pink? Bueno, Amarillo. Dan Buda saw this game live. Yeah, so dude's at 63 workers. The carriers get wiped out. Maybe because all his carriers died is... That's probably it. Okay, fine. So his carriers get wiped out, and that's the end of it. I don't know. He could have kept fighting. I don't see why not. He didn't believe in his allies anymore. Yeah, I suppose. What's up, SOS? 
So 391,000 points for our guy RJB. He wins the point totals. 387 for In My Eyes. 351 for Dungeon Dame. 234 for In Your Eyes. Most killed today. Dungeon Dame killed the most stuff. And a lot of that is probes. A lot of that is workers. Ends up losing a whole ton here too. But In Your Eyes lost 638 units. Outproduced by In My Eyes. So they made a lot and they lost a lot. They didn't win though. And then resources finally. In My Eyes the most. Dungeon Dame second most. And uh, RJB doing his best. At the end there too. That was fun. I do think that was a fun one. Thanks for sending that one in, RJB. I I do. We need some Zerg representation, so let's go. RJB on a or no, sorry, dead infested on Eclipse. I don't know if that infested is going under the name Sonic Erotica. It seems like that's something maybe he would do. Or if he's Pakura, no, he's got to be Sonic Erotica. 100%. So on Eclipse, top right, it's going to be our red Protoss. It is Sonic Erotica. And in the bottom left, got a dude. He is blue and he is Zerg. It is Pakura. Pakura. Pakura says lol. See? Understandably so. It's just, I guess it's a spin of the Mario Erotica that uh, Artosis' stream used to get or still gets. I don't know if that's still ongoing. It probably is. Seems like something that would have legs among Artosis' viewer base. You got tired of the Mario stuff. <laughs> Lucky Owl, hey. I cast your game, Lucky Owl. Oh, you're the Zerg. Oh, that's funny. So, Pakura. Huh. Fair enough. I know dead off races sometimes, so I figured it could maybe be the Protoss, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky, cast your game first today. It was a lot of fun. That was a good one. Good one for sure. And, like, props, too, for sending in a loss, man. That was great. Always very, you know, tons of respect for people that can send in a loss and say, you know what? Good game. We lost. It's okay. Still a good game. Dead Infested lets us know this game is going to be weird. It's going to get weird, man. Yeah, I'll, I mean, at the two-gate proxy opening, it definitely should get weird. I don't see why not. Oh, is he hatch firsting against a two-gate proxy, though? He is. This is almost just a straight-up build order loss, man. Oh, it's such a sneaky place for it, too. Oh, man. Zealot production. Be oh, it's on the way. Okay, Dad. What do you do? Professional StarCraft player, Dead Infested. Went hatch first against a double proxy gate. He sees it now because of the Overlord placement. And then he, what? Immediate throws up. A creep colony. Thank goodness for this Overlord Scout, man. Without that, I think maybe just dead. All right. So the natural base is going to die, but I think he's okay with that. I'm 100% sure he's okay with that. Because, oh, and then he proxy hatches inside the Protoss base. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're here for. So natural base dies. These Zealots can handle these Lings, no problem. The real concern for them is the Sunken, though. I love, oh, you know how much I love a good proxy hatch. We don't see them enough. Zalotes. Drones fighting, keeping that sunken alive. This is really nice drone stuff. The drones, you know, aren't great fighters, but they'll keep zealots away from... Oh, keep attacking the sunken... Never mind, he's bailing. He's bailing. Oh, I think if he takes that sunken down, he just kind of wins there. But also, very injured zealots. Maybe not. More, more zealots. But also, are you aware that there's a base in your base? There's creep in your base, but that doesn't necessarily show up on the minimap very, very well. 10 to 14 workers. These zealots, man. There's three of them. Two of them are real injured. More and more continuing to be on the way here. And this is... He's gotta know. Yeah, he's throwing up a second cannon in his base. The probe says, oh, there's a hatchery in my base. Lings. No, 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 no. Do donating lings to the cause there. Need more lings than that to take down three cannons. 
Another sunken coming up inside the main. This is problematic. This is one base dead infested versus a one base enemy Sonic Erotica. I don't know about coming down the ramp. Also, the Zealot count. Yeah, he's been distracted. He needs to be continuing to produce Zealots here. Instead, he's making a Cyber Core. Okay. Oh, snipe it. Snipe it. Yeah, six snipe. Lost like three Zerglings to do it. Like, oh, the creep. Oh, no. That's definitely straight up a sunken on the way. Oh, man. This sunken position is sick. It can kill both these and this. And it can maybe reach that cannon, too. Oh, boy. This sunken doing some work. The zealots are going home to deal with this. That is the best case scenario right now, for sure. All the... Oh, no more zealot pressure. Plus, your Sunken's doing some serious work on the other side. This is fantastic. Go you know, casually murdering pylons. Got some lings in support, because that's what the hatchery is all about up here. Can the Zealots take down the Sunken's? Once again, they find themselves in a situation where they really need a Sunken to die. And he is going to get it. That's way too many Zealot attacks on this dude. And bam, took it out and kept two of his Zealots alive. Okay, so the creep recedes a little bit. Protoss is alive here. The forward gateways do get wiped out and the probe dies too. Good, 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 good. So both players getting some nice little victories there. Getting rid of the forward gateways. Fantastic. Because those are the only gateways that exist for the Protoss. Although there are this one here. Zealots poking out, trying to make sure these don't happen. Oh, really? You think you're going to expand, says Dead Infested? Absolutely not. All right. Lings from the inside your house. Lings from outside your house. Just trying to flood you and take you down. Cannon down. Zealots down. Oh my gosh, uh, this is it? I think this one, oh, one cannon is all that stands between Sonic Erotica and Dead Infested right now. And he does end up saving it. Oh, he got a DT out! Yes, DTs! Oh, there's two cannons. There's two cannons and there's DTs defending. Amazing. Amazing! Oh, that was very close to being just a straight up Dead Infested win. Not that he's going to lose now, but that was straight up going to be a win. And now, not so much. Gets an Overlord out. Okay. All right. Beautiful decision there to make an Overlord. Didn't even consider doing that. I'm an idiot. Well done. Okay. So now the DT's effectiveness is greatly decreased. But still, seven kills. Not bad. Uh, maybe some more Zealots would be good. Ooh, the DT's are like, ah, oh, yes, there's an Overlord here. Can we just win anyway? Say the DTs. I'm trying to kill those drones. I don't know about that. Got the snipe in the drones so they can't. Uh, fair. They can't make any more coop colonies if the drones are dead. But I mean, there's larvae getting produced here all the time. This is a weird game. I like it. Second base exists for our guy dead infested. He's still down 19 to 23 workers, but not as bad economically as he was a while ago. Ah, I love the Corsair too. 
Love the Corsair too. This is quickly turning into a situation where Dead Infested is down on tech. We're just trying to win with Lings and Zunkins and stuff, and the enemy's got DTs, and the enemy's got Corsairs, and the enemy's got Archons and High Templar and stuff, right? Been in games like this, where it's like, how does Protoss tech up so fast? How oh, they were built, man. Corsair needs to start killing this Overlord now. He's just kind of hanging, though. Maybe forgot he existed. I don't know. Dude, send the Corsair down to kill this Overlord and then send the DT in. He's doing this in the wrong order. Corsair! Get it! Get it! Why is the Corsair not attacking anything? Did you forget it exists? This DT would be alive if the Corsair had killed that Overlord. Why are you not doing it? Ah! This Overlord too! Hey, he's like, oh, right. I have had a Corsair. I've had one for the last three minutes. There you go. So the Overlord finally dies. The DT doesn't have to worry about these Lings anymore. I mean, it's a lot of Lings at this stage, but you know, Dark Templars are patient. Wait, no, 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 no. Come back, save these guys. I mean, these regular old lings, man. No upgrades on these at all. Pretty good fighters against probes in some situations, anyway. Okay. Stabilized. Somewhat stabilized here is Sonic Erotica. He's got the Corsairs. He still hasn't killed this Overlord. Oh, there's Hydras now. Beautiful. Absolutely beautimous. Now we're looking at some tech from the Zerg player. Oh, loses the Corsair. Not the most pro control I've ever seen. I'm definitely entertained by this nibbler. <laughs> spore up. No spores in the main, but potential for some with this creep colony. I can't believe this macro or this macro this proxy hatch is still here for dead it's amazing it's done so much work put so much value in for him today yeah I was kind of thinking that SOS actually just a minute ago maybe this could be its own standalone video Either way, it's great. 26 to 30 workers. Protoss is still up, but... Yeah, the Hydra's in your own main. Tough. A tough look for any Protoss when you've got Hydralisks in your main base sniping your stuff. Ah, uh, the... No, that's gas. That's the gas income entirely for Sonic right now. You go just being careful just you know sitting back not taking cannon hits if he can help it templar archives is gonna die which is you know every zerg player in the world hates the templar archives good 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 Is he going to go in? I mean, there are three cannons. Uh, three cannons is pretty dicey. You need a lot of hiders for that with upgrades too, which there aren't any of those. I like the wall off. But suddenly Dead Infested is up. 55 to 50 total supply. That's supply blocked. 
our Protoss player. He's getting out of it for sure, but man. Corsair trying to kill an Overlord at the third base location of dead, but no, say the Hydras. How about you are not allowed to do that at all? This is a Hydra living situation. Hydra living zone. Yeah, maybe putting a sunken in here would be good. Okay, here comes Zealots with speed and DTs to remove the Hydralisk infestation from the main base. Very smart pulling back. These guys don't get the memo. And they die. And the Hydras have to pull back. All right, all right, all right. So he saves some stuff here. But the attack of the front is utterly unopposed. Everybody went in to deal with the Hydras in the main. They forgot about the natural. And GG, that is it. I think that's it. Anyway, this is a lot of Zerg, man. Hydraling against only Zealot. The probes have to evacuate. It's the only source of gas that Sonic has is here in the natural, and it's gone. So you're trying to win this thing with straight-up Zealots. It's just not going to work out all that well for you at all. Ling Hydra versus Zealot is a great combination. It always has been. Yep. 57 to 36 total supply here. There's a DT in the house, but there's overlords brought upon. DT got eight kills. Now is completely dead. Probes are fighting. And, you know, okay, they've got an attack. They're killing Hydras here a little bit, but also woefully outnumbered now and dead. Ooh, trying to make some lurkers, and Sonic calls the GG. He sees the lurker exit and says, I'm out. That's it. GG and dead infested is your winner in 16 minutes and 45 seconds. That was truly a fun game. I love the two-gate opening, which is scouted by Dead Infested. Throws up some Sunkins to defend, sacrifices his natural, and then to throw a monkey wrench into the proceedings, Proxy hatches the Protoss, who is not paying attention, understandably so. He's really worried about his zealots down here. And that's it. The Proxy hatch stays alive for the rest of the game. Beautiful. Creep inside the Protoss base forever, for eons and eons. And then techs up to Hydras, techs up to Lurkers, Gets some good damage done. Gets uh, Overlords out to deal with the DTs. Techs up to Hydralisks to deal with everything else. That was good. That was a lot, a lot of fun for sure. Silent Cami, how's it going? Woof, that was good. I don't know what else to say. And one of the more fun replays that Dead Infested has sent for sure. 48,000 points for Dead. 38,000 for Sonic Erotica. 23 to 4 buildings raise is kind of a big deal. And then resources. Oh, actually, units. Look at that one. Uh, yeah, if you outkill, two to one, but got outproduced by closer to a four to one or so, three to one. That's your math, as usual. And then did outspend the Protoss by 15 to 14,000 resources. Great. Truly, truly great. That was fun. All right, what do we got next up? Do, 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 do a Nibbler replay, because Nibbler is here. He calls it a quickly, quickly replay. Apt Pupil is sick of this. What's he sick of this? <laughs> Already, he's just sick of something real, real fast. <clears throat> All right, team one, books, Terran, his teammate, Protoss Nibla, you know this guy, and then Apt Pupil, bottom left, he's a Terran, pretty good player, I like Apt Pupil a lot, team two is Camille 0213, we got WTF is Pylon, who's a Protoss player, and then Leo rounding it out as another Protoss, 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 and a Protoss. So what are the teams here? Terran, Zerg, Terran, and then Zerg, Protoss, Protoss. Oh, Aptus have been playing random, and he got Terran five games in a row. That's what he's mad about. Okay. Silent Cavi says I look clean and sharp. <laughs> I got a haircut. I don't know, man. My sister got married yesterday, so I did want to look a little clean and sharp for that. <clears throat> Do I have a date? No. Nope. Yeah, I've got eight siblings, so I've been to a lot of weddings over the last few years. Uh, my 
two of my sisters gotten married over the last 12 months, so that's been really fun. I got two brothers left <clears throat> who aren't married yet. We'll see if they do. They're young yet, though, so don't expect anything anytime soon. Lucky Al's back from Mexico. You got COVID in Mexico? <laughs> that sucks, dude. Aw, did I cast the wedding? No. They did stream it on Facebook Live, though. That was interesting. For people who could not attend. She married somebody from England. So there were a lot of people on his side of the family that could not attend the wedding in America. So they Facebook streamed it for those people. That was kind of cool. All right. Ling pressure from Nebla. What else is new? Not much. It's pretty much the same thing as it always is. Save your swords in the house. He brought some Goliaths, which is nice. Nibbler says, we want to go... He doesn't want to go three. It's like, we already got zealots out there. Nine. And we want to kill nine. He's got a cannon up and a zealot and is making more zealots. But if, you know, if anyone gets attacked by two enemies, they're just going to have a really hard time defending. Uh, he's got three zealots out too, though. Mm, all right. Well, that zealot dies because he doesn't know how to micro at all. That is a good sign, actually, for Team Nibbler, if this guy doesn't know how to micro zealots. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba, jumping on the cannon, and it is dead. Pow. My Terran allies didn't scout, says Nibbler. He's mad about this. Understandably so. I get it. Leo. Leo coming in. Wait, is Leo attacking his teammate? Leo, no! Bad. No, this isn't Leo. This is this is books. Never mind. It's a blue Terran. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm looking at here. Leo is a Protoss anyway. I'm stupid. Okay, nice. Takes down a gateway. Well done, books. I'm sorry for misidentifying you there for a second. Meanwhile, bunch of zealots here on Nibbler's face. Nibbler, no! The enemy has arrived. It is in the form of a lot of zealots. Nibbler's down to two drones, floating about 600 minerals here. His ugh, his sunkens are trying to do damage. Books is in here trying to assist as well. We got more books coming in here trying to assist as well. Some zealots are not participating in this battle, which, you know, that is nice too. Hey, what's up, Lero Love? After two weeks in the Nordic Ocean on a work trip. Cool. Were you, like, on the ocean? Like on a boat? We're on a boat. Nibbler loses his main hatchery, which is the most annoying thing in the entire world. But the Zealot attack eventually gets cleaned up. Watson Nichols, thanks for subscribing. Oh my gosh, he's not going to win this. Okay. It's close. But there's more zealots on the way. Nibbler's getting super bopped right now. Yeah, Nibbler's like, yo. <laughs> he's got an army. Yeah, yeah. The early Ling pressure wasn't enough to really slow down any of the Protoss. Oh, and then Books just got eaten by Zerglings. I'm ready for bed, says Nibbler. <laughs> I know the feel. Okay, so Nibbler is eliminato. Except he has a home here. He's got a home away from home he's trying to set up. Meanwhile, Lings are trying to push on books, but he's got a bunker. And um, he's got medics, kind of. And the medics are healing SCPs right now because... Oh, there's nothing in the bunker. That's a problem. I don't. I dislike losing, says Nibbler. Yeah, Marine, get in the bunker. Get in the robot, Shinji. Not getting in the robot at all. Ugh. Litany against fears, going for a walk. I want to be upset, but I'm so proud. <laughs> what are you proud of? We're talking about previous games here. Firebats have arrived. Apt pupil, ready to rock. Mass firebat against the enemy's zealot swarms and lings, too. 
My marines are spawning so far. Ah. That is pretty cool. B? Did you get seasick? What's up, Pacolo? Adam Q with the super chat. $5 super chat. Thanks, Adam Q. You're welcome for making your Sundays bearable, Falcon. Falk, he says. Ah. Okay, so saves the day. There's Mike the Mutalisk. Thanks again, Adam Q. Glad I could make your Sundays better. I think it makes everybody's Sunday. It makes my Sunday better, that's for sure. No question about that. So apt people is dealing with all the zealots while all of his myriad of fire bats are up here he gets attacked when he needs the fire bats the most so what's up roger marsh nice working on some models are they warhammer models He's trying to surround the bunker with scvs in a keep it alive scenario but no no he is not too many zealots. All oh, too many zealots. We're at Hydralisk Tech now from Camille. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Yep. GG, man. Woo. Nibbler sends in a game where he gets bopped too. So yeah, today we get players who 100% <laughs> uh, lose the game. Frequent submitters, so very impressive that they're doing that stuff. I love it. Yeah. So Nibla. Man, are you looking? Where's some news? Omar, what do you need help with? What are you looking for right now? Ooh, Pokemon NA Championship. Okay, let's go another fastest map that's a little bit longer than eight minutes. Dead's at no, don't summon the spam bot, Dead. Don't do that. Come on, man. <laughs> don't do that to us. Okay, 3v4. Oh, right off the bat, 3v4. Okay. So bottom right is Voss. Yes, his teammate is simply A. And then Y dot Bombi, who's the Terran. Team two, who is team four? We've got R J Q N R Q L F F K. Who's the Terran? Teammate, White Protoss, 4509 247 3572. We also have UFC 229. And finally, Zach, who's a Teal Zerg player? Spam bot is never late. Do, 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 do. So what are we doing? Hmm? Overlord scouting around. Somebody speaking Korean, which is nice. Everybody's APMs are nice and pumped up too. I'm down. I'm down with some high APM. This might be, you know, a straight up high level fastest map with Koreans. Mm -hmm 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 -hmm. I want you to salute you. Hey, what's up, Gita? Gita Lonut? Salut. Patrick Montague's here too. Any changes to next week's Sunday plans? No. Nope. I'll be here next Sunday. I'm not canceling it at all. 
What is next Sunday? Why? I don't know. It's the 3rd of July. The 4th of July. Sure, holiday, but no biggie. Uh, Pocolo. I live in the Salt Lake Valley in Utah. Between the two mountain ranges. This is high level, says RJB. Yes. Oh, RJB sent this in, I think. Little zealot on zealot action here. The Marines are out. They've joined the party. And <laughs> Dan says, who agrees to a 3v4? I don't know. Maybe if one team is significantly better than the other one, making it three on four makes it more fair. Yeah, a little bit of agit chaos in the middle here. Marines versus Zealots versus Marines, you know, as per usual. In a fastest map where any Marines and Zealots are involved at all, Terran and Protoss. Korean, 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 Korean. No, one. Somebody wants to go to one. Let's go to one, boys. Only got, you know, six Marines and a couple of medics. Let's go kill him. I support this plan for sure. Zerg player quiet as usual. Either they could be aggressive with lings or they can be macro. They can't really do both. Gotta colors this thing. It's way too many. So red making a really concerted assault on southern blue here at the 6 o'clock position. Ton of marines, ton of zealot. This might just be dead. If you focus these cannons down with the marines, which is not really happening. There we go. Kind of. I don't know. The marines are a little haphazard on their placement here. But it works out in the end. All the cannons die anyway. Probes are getting massacred as well. This is for UFC players down to six probes. And that's going to get absolutely worse from there. On the other side, Team Blue, nice concerted attack at the 9 o'clock. SCV count plummeting here as well. Why Bombi? Down to 15 SCVs. Still dying. Running. Not running all that far. There we go. Let's get them out of here. Let's get them out of here. And are the zealots okay? The SCVs are coming back in. They're trying to save the homeland. There are reinforcing units trying to help save the day here, but a lot of SCVs are going to die in defending their place in this game. Finally, zealots getting cleared out. Kind of getting chased away. Yeah, friendly marines and zealots are showing up. And that's all she wrote. Ah, okay. So down here, UFC is toast. Main Nexus gone. Enough money to build another one and a probe exists, though. Ah, DT attack, top right. Oh, no. Oh, no. Terran can struggle against this anyway, but especially in fastest map, they don't usually get detection at regular times. Why are you running? Oh, friendly overlord. Friendly overlord. I gotta get up here. Oh, they killed one of the DTs. That's good. That's really good. Okay, but denying all of the mining up here. Oh, so many SCVs are dying too. Mm. Overlord, go. Go, Terry. Terry, you can get it. <laughs> Brenka set. Says, let's hit that like button. I agree. Let's hit that like button. Okay, okay. Terror the Overlord saves the day. This is why you send overlords to teammates' bases in team games if you're a Zerg. Just park it right over their main. They will be happy about it sometimes. I promise. Enemy zealots are here too, but... Actually, that's a lot of zealots. I was going to say, not much of a concern, but then they are a concern, actually. Thank you for asking. Bunker up. Marines need to go into the bunker. Guys? Okay. 
You do not get in the bunker. Not allowed. Mm, hang on, hang on. Are we back? Where's that one? Okay, we gotta find the one purple probe. Here it is. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, that is a really sneaky place to try to come alive. Uh, if that, that gets discovered, such danger. Such danger. Not directly over the main, says Nibbler. Send it to the supply depot near the main or a pylon. Okay, all right, fair enough. Either way, sending an overlord to your teammates' main bases early in the game is really a nice thing to do. Big old Hider attack against our earlier attacked dude. I don't know. Marines trade pretty well against Hydras. Zealots, though. Oh, the Hydras went for an attack, and they got absolutely flanked by friendly units and just removed. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hydralisks. We ne okay, so all the Hydras are dead, but then some Marines show up. The teamwork is struggling a bit on this one. If the Marines show up with the Medics and the Hydras, they probably bust this. Much more effective. Storm drop. Good drone pull, though. Still at 35 workers, which is the most workers in the game right now. From our Zerg player, who, again, has been quiet and therefore has a lot of production and a lot of ability to make Hydralisks. It's another drop. It's another drop attempt. Pretty good. Pretty good play there. That knocks 450 down to 27 workers. Eh, is fine. Pretty good probe pull in that case. More. Mm, it's going to be just drops, isn't it? It's going to be game of drops, which, hey, fair. That's what fastest map is largely about. So Zerg players, 48 workers, man, really droning up hard. This shuttle gets spotted and executed. No, High Templar makes it out, gets a storm off, kills a marine, and maybe, like, two marines. Whoop. More drops. More drops here. Okay, 32 kills is a lot. Another one over here on the right side against white. Ah! Then another one, two, four, five, five, down to ten workers. Zex down to 20 after that. Okay, so Team Blue just took serious hits to their economies. Two of the players did, Protoss and Zerg alike. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're 3v3 in it. Team Blue, who lost one of their players, who's trying to come back from the dead, just got economically crippled. Again, rebuilding possible. What's up, Tuna member? Super cool member of the channel, Tuna on Toast. And member of the Discord server, too. Big concerted blue attack, bottom right, against our dude, Voss. So he's got cannons, he's got High Templar, he's got Zealots to defend. That's a great storm. That is such a great storm. More Hydras and Marines and Medics have arrived. Al arrive. I don't know. Is this survivable? Are there any reinforcements coming at all? No. Not at all, but oh no, UFC got discovered. UFC is found. He doesn't have enough money to make a new Nexus either. Did he make another another one? Nope, he didn't. He's got to save it. He has to save this or he's out. But also, Voss is dying. So that's good for Team Blue. Like, really dying. There is no red coming to save this guy at all. Ooh, saved it. Saved the Nexus. Thanks to, well, temporarily saved it, thanks to the fighting of probes and hydras. Two things that are not good fighters against zealots, it turns out. No! Wait, where'd the hydras go? Hydras! You're not even attacking. What is going on? No! All right, so UFC is out. Wait, wait. No, are you serious? 8 HP, it gets saved. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah, barcode A says we gotta go to one. I don't know why we keep going to one. Either way, Voss is dead. One probe. Let's see where that probe is. Blue. Blue probe. 
Um, um, here. Okay, building a nexus inside A's base. <laughs> Zealots are like, we gotta get that nexus. Run! Raw. Oh, no, no. We're gonna stop and try to kill this tank first, and maybe all of these marines. No, that's not gonna happen. Okay, just kidding. We're gonna kill the nexus. Ah! No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Okay, so still alive Voss, still alive UFC, both in a kind of scenario here. Zex at 125 supply, he's rebuilt his economy to 34 workers, 49 from Bombi. A is at 52. I don't know, A is doing alright. Obviously going mech at this stage of the game, the marines have had their time, but now it's time for the tanks and the vultures and the goliaths. Was that a drop attempt that just died? I think it was. Just uh, something blue expire in that bottom left. Fantastico, what's up? Gonna be saved by the bell. Oh no, he got it! No! What did he get it with? A re no, not Reaver. There's only Zealots in here. Did he drop? I gotta do it. Sorry. I gotta see it. I have to see the death of the Nexus. I have a lot of emotions invested in that thing. Yeah, Patrick was right. Strong breeze. <laughs> Fair. He unloads the zealots. They all go, ka-chunk, and it dies. <laughs> oh, does he have enough money to build a new one? Oh, they rearranged the players. He does have enough money to rebuild a Nexus. And he has probes. Got a pylon here. Oh, those these are the probes. Fair. Also, okay. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. It's rewind time. <laughs> are they going to do a YouTube rewind this year? Hmm. They should really just stop doing those, right? Did they say they're going to stop doing those? Because they are because they suck? This is all corporatized. Remember when the YouTube Rewind used to be actual independent YouTube creators? And it was fun to see. And now it's just freaking Will Smith and uh, Patton Oswalt and Jimmy Fallon. And it's like, dude, we don't want to... YouTube, we don't want to come here for that stuff. Give us YouTube for the people that we come here to watch. Drop a Reno. Right on A. A hasn't been dropped yet today. He's got 50. Oh, this isn't A. I'm an idiot. This is Ybombi. Okay. Sunny with a chance of storms. 27 SCVs remaining. Yo, that was a good drop. He's still just... Yeah, this one Zealot's trying to clear out this southern base. More drops. More drops. More drops. More drops. More drops. Need a Brood War Rewind. Yeah, that'd be fun. Corsair's killing a barracks. They'll get there. Eventually. Boom, 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 bada, bada, boom. Oh, production time needs to come back. DT's on the way. That's neat. Finally, a hive coming in from the Zerg player, who's been, again, largely left alone. Did take a storm. One storm to the face. Back up to 57 workers, which is the third most in the game right now. And 57 is a pretty good place to be at this stage of the match. So going for just a lot of Hydralisks. Oh, and a bit of a doom drop here on our guy, Bombi. 
Why bombe? Oh boy. But there's tanks and reavers and stuff here. Okay, this is pretty ill-fated mass doom drop, I gotta say. And by ill-fated, I mean it's actually sort of working, I guess. But also, look at all this zerg blood on the ground. It's a lot of zerg blood. Okay, so no, that did not do all the things that that zerg player wanted it to do. Because there were... Who puts Reavers at a Terran base? Well, a good teammate does, that's for sure. I'm gonna try to Reaver... Uh, uh, that's a dead Reaver. Wait, no. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Killed the siege tank. Oh no, this base is in a lot of trouble now. There's only one Zealot to defend it against the Reaver attacks. Meanwhile, siege tanks setting up on the other side of the wall are always annoying in fastest map. Zealot says, I'll save you. Blech. Blech. That's what he says. Blech. Okay, just who needs Doom Drops? Says Vec. Or Zek. Let's go ahead and just A move a million two one Hydras into your base before your tank count gets too crazy. Nice, it's working out. Tanks are dying, factories are dying. The defensive Reavers are gone because they're up there trying to kill UFC and they're working at it very well. Ah, this is a lot of Hydras, man. Oh, and the tanks are on support here, too. I think this might be it for our guy Wybombe. Straight up. There's just no way he's getting out of this one. The Zerg player, he fails on a drop pretty effectively. And then says, yo, what's up? Is this a sneaky twofer? No farewell, it's not. <clears throat> okay, so he's a dead Zerg or dead nerd, dead Terran. You know, Terrans can fill their buildings off so he can probably escape to somewhere else. Pretty big drop, getting stormed and cannoned before it even really reaches its destination, but some Reavers, ah, they get the Nexus. Yo, 450 is down to 25 probes after that, and he loses his main Nexus, which hurts. So the Terran is dead, the Reaver, ah, that's it, wow. Okay, fair enough, T wait, hold that, I'm a little, Little confuzzled at that ending there. It's just a team blue win, right? I guess. Yeah, I mean, look, with the death of Y Bombi here, it's pretty much. Who's even left here, right? 28 supply, 30 supply, Team Red is dead. I want to see what happened up here, though. That Reaver was attacking stuff. And then it either got chased away or it died. This is interesting. An interesting game. Okay. Oh, so the rear gets chased away by the zealot, but shouldn't really shouldn't have. This zealot is dead. Oh, he tried to come in. Oh. I don't know if he was trying to come in and help against these. Hydras, but he flew right over the Hydras and died. Okay, well, reasonable stuff. Did I miss? Mm -hmm. Okay, so fair enough. Why Bombi's only at 50 supply? He's got a. This isn't Why Bombi. Who is this? This is all. All's at 74. 176 supply. <clears throat> he puts a ton of that supply into this drop that does finish off the main nexus because it only has like 100 HP anyway. He's down to 150. And there's some chatter. He just doesn't have... I don't know. Siege tanks on the high ground. Okay, I think that was it. I think he rage quit because there were siege tanks. On the high ground. Fair enough. Fair enough. GG. 1v3 not possible. That's another way to more succinctly put it. RJB is correct. So Zek, 190,000 points. He's the winner. Zerg was kind of allowed to build up and macro up. Gets dropped once. Can recover from that. 
And does. Lost the second most units to A here. Resources across the board. Just more from Zek spent by anybody else. Other than A. Well, A is number two on that list. Fantastic. Tre tre fantastic. All right. It's got a... Ooh, it's a mind control fastest map featuring Mr. WK Cross. So let's get that loaded in. Bop, bop, bop. Bop, 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 bop. Okay. So, Team 1 on Ye Old Fastest Map is a purple Protoss named ABCV. We also have It's Up, Ba. A Zerg player bottom left. Eat, Knight, right side. Green Zerg. Team two, the hammer, 24. We also have Coffee Mon. Oh, Coffee Lemon. Coffee Lemon, who's a Protoss and another Zerg named 989-238-923823. John Doe saw Black Widow and Doctor Strange 2. Didn't like him. Hmm. Reasonable. I respect your takes, John Doe. I thought... Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is a pretty good Sam Raimi movie, is the thing. A lot of the second half of that film is very Sam Raimi. Who is Ash vs. the Evil Dead? Uh, what are his other movies? Stuff like that. Kind of like horror comedy stuff. So, if you look at it from that perspective, and not that it's a Marvel movie exactly, I think you have more fun with it. Uh, I think Thor's going to be great, just because Taika Waititi's directing it, and nothing Taika has ever done has been bad. That said, does any director have a 100% win rate? I don't know that they do. But it's Taika, man. It's the guy who gave us Thor Ragnarok. Taika is the man. I'm so excited for Love and Thunder. I mean, I, if Taika Waititi was doing anything, I'd be excited for it. So, take that for what you will. He's also tapped to make a Star Wars film. Not about the Skywalker saga, which I'm really excited about, too. I don't know if any of you guys watched Star Wars Visions on Disney+. Plus. It was just six or like eight little small 10, 15 minute kind of vignettes. Kind of smaller, not really episodes necessarily, but they were set in the Star Wars world, but with characters we don't know. There was no R2, there was no Luke, there was no Darth Vader, there was no Empire. It was just the Force and Jedi. And it was awesome. I really enjoyed Visions a lot. Different directors, different art styles. They were all animated. Really fun stuff. Meanwhile, a cannon rush is happening here on Eat Night. And um, he's kind of saving it, sort of. But also losing a ton of SCDs in the meantime. Yeah, Nolan's close, Dave C. I agree, but... Uh, Dark Knight Rises, I think, is more of a miss than a hit. This is more cannons, man. Okay, so Eat Knight's gonna die. Lift and run, says ABC. We can't save you, you can't save yourself. Lifting and running he is. Jojo Rabbit was great. Yeah, Taika Waititi movie, Jojo Rabbit was good. But anyway, Love and Thunder I've got high hopes for. And if it's bad, I'm gonna be very sad for a bit. Because <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> We can't lose Taika. We can't lose Taika to the Disney machine. Just, you know, making fairly okay Marvel Star Wars content. Ooh, RJB says Nolan has two misses. One of them's a huge miss. So, Interstellar is okay. I don't know. I only saw Interstellar once. <clears throat> Which says a lot there. But I know a lot of people who really, really, really like Interstellar. So, hmm. Hmm. Oh, Tenet. You know? Tenet might be a miss as well. I think you might be right about that one. I honestly kind of forgot it existed. That says a lot about the movie, too. What Tenet to me kind of feels like most is that Christopher Nolan discovered this kind of weird backwards filming technique and wanted to make a movie with it, and that's largely what the movie is, is the filming technique. The interesting thing there that he found, right? That he discovered. Yeah, 
Yeah, all right, so Eat Knight's only at three SCVs. He's effectively been removed from the game, but he's not dead dead yet. Lucky started Game of Thrones. Wow. Fair enough, man. Game of Thrones is quite a ride, especially for about the first five seasons. A lot of people feel like it starts to fall off. But, you know, everyone's opinions are different. Maybe someone can enjoy it. And you're right. Tenet has problems with sound balance, but a lot of Nolan's movies have problems with sound balance, and I don't know why. Anyway, big attack coming into the Zerg. I'm going to step away for a second. I'll be right back. Denis! Denis Villeneuve. Love Denis Villeneuve. I think he's great. He's not exactly a super blockbuster director, right? His movies are usually more thoughtful, quieter, smarter. But I really like him. I like Denis Villeneuve a lot. I really liked his Dune, and I can't wait for part two, and that comes out in like two years. <laughs> They ran out of source material for Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, right around there, right around season five. So it makes a lot of sense when that happened. All right, Zealot Hydra attack. Pushing in. Goodbye. Goodbye. Every static defense unit here. By that, I mean all of these cannons. The Sokens might do better. Potentially. I love the Barrack Scout here in top left Protoss. That's fantastic. <clears throat> I really like Inception a lot. What's up, Lucky? Really love Memento. Memento is a brilliant movie. It's I think it's his first. <clears throat> try to push top right on our Protoss, who is harboring a fugitive in Eat Night. If you kill him, it's kind of a two-for-one scenario there. Yeah, enjoyed Parasite. <laughs> With subtitles, yes. It's a drop, it's a drop, it's a heading to the top left drop. Let's go. Twenty kills, there we go. 
The guy got it. Ah. Yeah, that hurts. The hammer's down to nine probes now. Anytime your worker counts in single digits at the nine minute mark of the game, you're gonna be pretty sad about that. Uh. The dragon one, Tuna? Isn't that a prequel? Or are you talking about the Jon Snow announced sequel? They want to make a Jon Snow sequel, which is like. Uh, uh, Okay. Fair enough, I guess. Dunkirk was great. I thought Dunkirk was good. But again, Dunkirk's another example of Nolan just being obsessed with time in an environment that didn't need him to be obsessed with time. Like, it's Dunkirk. It's this. It's a World War II battle story. It's a really, you know, it's a compelling story. It's a very proud moment in English history. It did not need him to dink around with different timelines at all. But he had to because he's Christopher Nolan and it was confusing. As a result it didn't need to be. Also, these DTs are just going to absolutely wreck this lair, right? No, they're not. What's the... Oh, these overlords down here. Okay, that's close. That lair was very, very dead. These drops? You're just here for detection purposes. Maybe here for detection purposes. I don't know. This is a pretty intense battle right here, man. We got DTs up north. We got dragoons pushing in. We got dragoons defending. We got drones going somewhere. Are they here to attack? I... No, they're just rallied to a really bad place. I Ugh, Hydra's pushing left here as well. Oh, the hound. Yeah, you gotta love the hound, Lucky Owl. Gotta love the hound. One of my favorite arcs in all of Game of Thrones is the hound and Arya on adventures. I think when they were out traveling the land, having adventures, doing cool stuff, one of my favorite things of all of Game of Thrones. Go for another drop, boys. Let's get that. Get it. Da, 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 da. Hammers down to 10 workers again. The hammer's getting storm dropped and not really responding very well to it at all. <laughs> He's having a much tough, 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 tough game. Man, if you're, you know, if you're going to play fastest map and you struggle with drops murdering you, it's not going to be a really fun experience. Yeah, Theon's story was really good. Again, there's a lot of great stuff in Game of Thrones. There is. The fact that it ended poorly doesn't mean the whole thing was garbage, but boy. The ending was so garbo. Is this a fake out? No, he gets a storm up, but after all, the drones have already been evacuated. Like, he f telegraphed flying right over, and then was like, hmm... Let me give you a second to pull your drones, and then I'll attack the mineral patch. That was kind of a weird drop for sure. Uh, no. I did not see Seven at the cinema. I saw Seven in uh, seven a couple years later. 
Uh, one of my roommates when I was in college was a huge fan of Seven, so he got me to watch it. It was just on DVD, just on a TV. It was probably around 2004 when I finally got around to watching that one. Yeah, Seven's great. Defiler, can you drop nine, says ABC. Who is Defiler? Me, says It's Oppa. Does he have Defilers? I feel like if he had Defilers, he'd be, de you know, dark swarming these lurkers by now. That's great, Patrick. Yeah, my parents were very strict on adult level-ish content, too. So, I didn't really see much of anything that's rated R until I left home and went to college, so... In the same boat. All right, man. Again, uh, we talk about this, right? Face smashing into a bunch of sieged tanks on this map where there's a choke and there's cannons and reavers supporting them is a tough, tough thing to do. But you can. We've seen really elite level Protoss players just completely overwhelmed with non-stop Dragoons and Zealots, maybe some DTs, maybe some Storm in there too, and just get through. There you go. Getting through the tank setup, getting to the second line, continuing to push on up. But the big trick here is the constant reinforcing, right? If you... Okay. Muta bomb. I haven't seen a Muta bomb in a hot minute. Wow. At all. Sniping the Hydralisk Dens down. Nine is gone, says it's Appa. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of Hydras. Uh, guys? Guys? Okay. Just rallying. Don't mind us. Rawr. Like, move. why are you moving into range of the Muta attacks with your Hydralisks? This is rough. This is really, really rough here. The Muta Bomb is sick, though. Really, really well done. Worker count for 989 is at 23, which is surprisingly more than I thought. But you know, these Dragoons with their 222 upgrades against 1 1 Mutos are going to be just fine. So what's the state of the game here? ABC is at 170, it's off is at 179, the Hammer's at 139, and Coffee Melon's at 174. So both teams have someone who's pretty well injured, but not dead yet. Yeah, remember when I said the Dark Swarm... Where are your obs? We're just gonna walk through the Lurker Trap, eat some damage, and call it good. Ex Machina is a great movie. Yes, Robert, I like that one a lot. Yeah, 
ABCV is, oh, it's Dan Budo's coach. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. He's got the most supply of anybody in the game right now, so that's nice. Um, Coffee Melon doesn't believe in the concept of detection. So he'd be winning this pretty handily if he had, I don't know, an observer with him. One, maybe. Or, you know, maybe an overlord will come assist now that the lurkers have gotten six kills. You know, a bunch of kills a piece here. There we go. So the observer shows up. Hey, an observer and an overlord shows up. Yeah, so this attack would have just greatly succeeded if not for the fact there was no detection. So 999 taps out. He's got Guardians wrecking him after the Muta Bomb, understandably so. But this is just kind of a typical PvZ scenario where a ton of Dragoons are inside the Zerg base. And yeah, Guardians are fine unless they're getting hit by anything and then they die. And like I said, 2-1 Dragoons here, 2-2-2 two, two, two in here. We've got two separate players, which, you know, not exactly huge numbers here, but, God, these Guardians are just not being microed well at all. I think that's it, man. I mean, yeah. Team Red has lost a lot. Team Blue... Has lost a lot as well, but it really looks like it's going to be a 209 supply ABCV <laughs> who's got his own. Let's see, what has he got here? He's got his own factories, he's got his own tanks. Doesn't really come into play, I don't think, but you know, it's always fun anyway. Get some mind control. Oh, he recalled some tanks in to try to save the day. Hold on. Hold on. The tank recall might save the day here. And by save the day, I mean maybe prevent the Zerg player from dying entirely. Because I don't think we're saving the game at this point. Although, I don't know. Maybe we are. I mean, heck yes. Oberyn Martell, one of the greatest characters on TV. So, 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 so great. Pedro Pascal is just such a fantastic actor. I love him a lot. Anything he does, I think he's fantastic in. Of course, they use him in The Mandalorian and have him wear a helmet the whole time. So it's like he's barely even... It's barely even Pedro, right? I think I've ranted about that one enough. I would recommend the books, but doors aren't finishing those either. It's true. I don't think so. Are we really just wandering into a million siege tanks? Is that what we're doing today? Look. Look, look, look. It's up us down to 64 total supply. I don't know. A uh, big recall up here on our dude. The hammer. More siege tank recalling. Oh, yeah. That's what we're here for. Zealots. Zealots, get in here and save us from the enemy that is recalled siege tanks. Okay, all right, man. When you're at 239 supply, you can do a lot of different things that you can't do if you're only at 200. I know, Tuna. Why didn't the Zerg player get Dark Swarm? Great question. He would still be very much alive if he had Dark Swarm instead of the mostly dead that he is right now. Is this all? No, some of this is Eat Knight. Eat Knight's up to 120 supply. He's only got plus one attack. For his tanks, which is kind of embarrassing, he should really have better upgrades than that. Mm 
Just trying to wander zealots into, again, massive tank lines, which will work in time if you have a massive bank. But if it's really a one-time thing, getting through that first layer is not happening. The 20 minute hive says tuna yeah not super ultra great at all see again great you came out here you killed some tanks SCVs sacrificing their bodies i do like the mass 333 zealot attack up here into eat knight's base because eat knight struggling eat knight's having a rough rough day Zerg so player's trying to rebuild. It's up has got, you know, a decent amount of money. He's rebuilding up his uh, his hatcheries here. Just having a bunch of 1-1 one -one siege tanks hanging out. It's fairly hard to crack for an enemy that is on its way to kill you. Roadblock. Oh, maybe it's just that's what the rally is. Maybe it's not a Roblox. I mean, okay. You're trying to finish off its Appa here. You're going to be able to kill these outlying buildings, but once again, running up against these tanks is just going to make this a lot harder than it otherwise would be. The Mutas have 3-2 upgrades, which is nice, but when you're dealing with 3-3-3 Dragoons, it's just not gonna work out all that well for you. Trying to have an advantageous position by getting on this high ground, but no. That's not happening. And yeah, just, okay, so all these new hatcheries are dying. Fare thee well, all the new hatcheries. More Dragoons without Dark Swarm coming out to try to save the day. It's like, look, man, if you're not going to get Dark Swarm, maybe just get Hydras. Just Hydras will do better here than your just Lurkers will do. And he's rallying them in... Rally them here! Why are you rallying them into death? It's Appa. It's Appa. You're having a real, real tough time here today. I understand. You're under attack by all of the enemy Protoss. And all of your hatcheries are dying for the second time today. And the siege tanks are keeping you alive, but just barely. Like, the siege tanks moving up here would be more useful, I think. But I guess you're too busy recalling the hammer with more siege tanks up here. Bottom. 
Okay, I think this might be the end for the hammer. He's been dropped a million times. He's lost a ton of workers. He's gotten Siege Tank recalled at least three times today. Which, how often does that ever happen to anyone? And Coffee Melon taps out. And the hammer leaves too. He's got a million tanks destroying his things. And the hammer? Yeah, 312 supply for ABCV. Just casually mind controlled an SCV. Got a bunch of siege tanks, got some recall, said tank recalls are good. And he was right, tank recalls are good. So who's still around? Oh, you guys are just hanging out. Okay. In that case, we're done. GG. GG. That was great. That was really fun. Nicely done there by ABCV. 456,000 points. He's as coach, apparently. But 509 for Coffee Melon. He actually won the day, but... Ah. Uh, not able to keep up with, obviously, a 300-plus supply player. Neat. Super neat. All right. What else do we have as far as the replays go today? Oh. You know what? This is a 1v1 TVP fastest map epic. Somebody put in the title. Do we believe them? I don't know. We'll have to discover that for ourselves. But thanks, everybody, for hanging out so far today. We've got 72 likes. We can bump that up to 100 likes. I think that's entirely possible. But here on Fastest Map, we got Leonix. He is a Blue Terran player. And in the bottom right, it's our dude, LSJ3, who is a Protoss. So we're going to times two this. I'm going to step away, and I'll be right back. But place your bets now. Who's going to win this one? Oh, shoot. <laughs> there was a proxy while I was uh, away. So, okay, cool. This is enough Marines to handle these Zealots for sure. Also, this is getting walled off. So, mm, this isn't going to win, obviously. I like how there's got a pylon up there. I mean, he can't do anything with it. If this was StarCraft II, he could warp units in. Once he would have researched the warp gate technology, and this would be really dangerous. But as it stands, nothing. No danger at all. Hey, what's up, Gecko? Glad you made it to the stream today. Welcome aboard. Yeah, Zealots are not going to try to breach this. They're really just going to try to stay out here and contain for the most part. As much as they can do, which maybe isn't a whole lot. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh. A little grilled cheese play. Tuna does love a grilled sandwich. Bile versus Toss. Totally viable. Until Storm and Reaver start to pop. Are we seeing Storms and Reavers? No. Is LSJ doing any of that stuff? No. It is cannons and zealots 
and gateways and finally getting a cyber core started. But I mean, you know, we're five minutes into this thing. You didn't have a cyber core. We're gonna definitely do some uh Definitely gonna do some times twos on this one because it's a bit of a longer match, but when there's battles, we'll slow it down like this one here. Yeah, see, Marines are great against Zealots. With they have stim, and especially if they have any medic support, they're amazing. Which, um, also no academy, so that's not happening. You know, what'd be great here is DTs. Although Engineering Bay exists, he's getting plus one attack, but he's he can't be planning. Cad? Okay, finally getting an academy. I was going to say, he's holding off on that. If you eat tuna every day, you get mercury poisoning. Is that true? I know there's mercury in tuna, but if you eat like one tuna sandwich a day, does it kill you? Do you get mercury poisoning from that? Or does it have to be like... Like, bananas are radioactive, right? But you have to eat like 17 tons of bananas to die. So it's like a ridiculously small amount. I do like a tuna. But times two speed now. Templar archives, there we go. Robotics facility, speed's on the way, support bay warping in. Alright, so LSJ knows what's up. LSJ straight up is ready to rock. He's got the potential for Storm and the potential for Reavers now if he wants them. Reavers would be cool. We are all plastic now, says Dead Infested. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the microplastics movement is going to turn into in the next few years. Yep, Psionic Storm getting researched. Some DTs coming in. Going to Marine tank his way. Oh, that cannon positioning is so mean, though. Ah, oh, then DTs came in, too, and got a tank. Oh... LSJ, you boss. Kill these cannons. I have to scan. Just lift a barracks and look at them that way. Come on, lift a barracks. Look at them that way. Do it. Do it. Do it for the content. Yeah, see, Litany says lift your barracks. Build on the other side of the walls. There you go. Lift the barracks for spotting is also very good. Extraordinarily good. So the contain is real. The Protoss just threw down double Stargate. This might be a carrier transition. Double Stargate is a little more carrier than Arbiter, isn't it? So most of you think Leonix is going to win this thing based on the first 10 minutes. I think he's looking pretty good. Maybe too many Marines at this stage of the game. He's making more barracks. And like, okay, so like Storm is done. The problem for LSJ here is that he is definitely going carriers, right? Where's his fleet beacon though? Do you have a fleet beacon, sir? No. What's he doing? No, but like for real, what are these for? Corsairs? Scouts? He's making all the Stargates in the universe, but not making anything with them. He's maxed out, to be fair. 
Super drop moving out here. All right, so round two, who do you think's gonna win now? Thinking about a drop. Thinking about a drop. Really, really wants to reverb drop. Bop, bop. Of course, a million turrets have been produced in the meantime while you've been thinking about it. So this is not going to work. Let's see, Leonix has 61 SCVs. How many will he have after this is over? The answer is all of them. Yeah, 60. <laughs> uh, that was rough. I gotta say that was officially a rough situation. That drop did not go well at all. Once again, Stargate's hanging out. Mind control coming in. Did he wait? He did not mind control an SCV during that drop. That would be insane if he could pull that off, but no, he didn't. He did not. He's just making Stargates, man. Nope. Fleet. Okay. Now he has a Fleet Beacon. Where is it? Ah, it's up over here. Okay, cool. And an Arbiter Tribunal. Nice. Okay. See, the, the fate of the Marines is to get stoned. Carrier capacity on the way, getting recall, getting ghosts is our guy, Leonix. Awesome. I'm on board with some of that stuff. Dog with the blogs in Salt Lake City for the week. What should you do? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. You like hiking? Do you like nature? There's a million hiking trails in Salt Lake. In the mountains. You can go camping out there, which is super nice and lovely. Um, we've got museums. There's a dinosaur museum you can go to if you're interested. Got some nice restaurants downtown. I don't know. What do you want to do? What is your thing, dog with a blog? <laughs> Join the church, says Dave C. <laughs> yeah, you can go to Temple Square, the headquarters of the Mormon church in Salt Lake City. It's a nice place. I don't know. We'll definitely have someone talk to you about joining them. So maybe that's not your jam. Carrier production happening. Bup, 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 ten carriers at a time. Try to find Carl Malone. Try to find John Stockton. He still lives around here. Oh, killed his own marine. Maybe by accident. I don't know. People are still pretty confident that Leonix has this thing, and I don't know. He's been contained for 17 minutes. He hasn't even gotten out of his own front door yet. He hasn't harassed or caused major problems for LSJ at all in this game. Psychonaut says, get pregnant. <laughs> Go to Utah and get pregnant. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think... I don't know, man. I don't know if Dog with a Blog can do that, biologically speaking. Maybe? Maybe. Chase some cats. Ted says, how much is Brood War Remastered? Well, let me tell ya. According to StarCraft.com, Brood War Remastered, if you're buying it in America, it is $7.49. And they do, yep, 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 custom game still exists. It's the same base game. Uh, it's not a remake. It is Brood War with a new fancy skin on it. So yeah, you can still make your own maps. There are, you still have the Battle.net lobbies. You still have people making custom games all the time. The most packed ones are gonna be US West and the Korea server. Uh, Brood War itself is free, yes, but the remaster is seven bucks. What's up, Slicky Fats? All right, so Leonix is very, very, very slowly moving out here with his tank marine army, which I don't know. Is it enough to handle all of the carriers? Hmm. Hmm.
So Brood War is free. The remaster is seven bucks. That's why Brand Cassette knows the US West server is the best one. Okay. So, largely recognizing there's not a ton of anti-air with this army of Leonix, the carriers are going to come wipe out all of these siege tanks and just set Leonix back a lot. Mmm, Dog with a Blog is going to go to Lava Hot Springs. That's a cool place. Very cool place for sure. I don't know. I'm a boring, boring human person. I play video games, I go out and see a movie every once in a while, I'll go out to dinner with friends or family every once in a while too. But like, I don't know. I don't know all the touristy things in the Salt Lake area. I'm not a very good host that way. So yeah, now the Marines are coming in, and this is why Marines are good. Look at them eating these interceptors, man. Just nom 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 nom. Ooh, good snipe on that science vessel, though. Love that. Love a good snipe on a science vessel. Best thing. So, carriers doing their harassy things. They're kind of like mosquitoes a little bit, right? So many Marines are dying to interceptors and getting stormed. Just as a Marine, man, it's a rough life. You're a convict, you've been in prison, they'll let you out to fight. Then these aliens are here, man, and they got flying giant ships and they can cast magical spells on you. You die from electricity, I guess, as far as I can tell. Yeah, you can see what's left over from the Olympics in Utah. We've got ski jumps and ice rinks and uh, other Winter Olympic stuff. Great skiing in the winter. Oh, the Marines are actually getting shots on the bodies of these carriers. They're not being microed all that well. Come on, LSJ, you got this thing. But there's actually, I did go to this once years ago. They've got ski jump. Uh, ski jump ramps that work in the summer. They're just like, uh, so you ramp down them and you go into water. It's real interesting. It was kind of fun to watch people training on that. So maybe you can go to that. I don't know where it is. <laughs> up, up in Park City somewhere would be my guess. I think that's where it was when I went, you know, 15 years ago. Ooh, lockdown getting researched from Leonix. Love a good lockdown. Okay, we got our another 10 minute increment of who wins. Uh, LSJ's carrier control is kind of bad. But also, Leonix isn't making Goliaths to deal with these carriers either, so... I don't know. It's an interesting question. I don't know. So the battle is here, right? This is where the battle's been for the last most of the game. Get some lockdown. Let's get it. Ooh, we are getting scouts, though. 
There's getting at least the scout upgrade, which I don't know at this stage of the game. Why not do that? I guess Yeah, so the voting says Leonix he had like a 70% vote 10 minutes ago. It's down to 60% now People are feeling less good about him. I think again because he's refusing to make Goliaths against these carriers Which would honestly do better than oh, these poor Marines. This kid is getting stormed to death Carrier count is not awesome, mind you. There's only five of them. The interceptors are not doing well either. Another round of carriers is on the way. And here comes a Dark Archon to wander into the battle and... Observe. He's here to observe what's happening. Falcon Paladin 2024. I could run for president. I'm a natural born citizen and I am over 34, so it's possible. Yeah, 60-40. So that round of polling ends with a 60-40 for Leonix. So people still think Leonix is going to win, but not as many as the last time around. This little area of Cannonville up north from LSJ is going to die, but it's not really providing much value for him anyway. It was more just a spot for drops, which it did a great job of that, I would say. So going down, to get a bit of a blind spot here. Left side under attack too, which is absolutely hilarious. Prank a set. Ah, uh, you're the best. <laughs> Bring some tanks, wipe this out as well. New carrier group has arrived. You could just build a whole new carrier group at once. Well, 10 of them anyway. This is a very, very weird, weird 1v1 for sure. I'm enjoying it though. I gotta say, seeing DTs, seeing the carriers, seeing lockdown, seeing wraiths be produced to deal with the carriers, okay. Top right base has been scouted by a Leonix. He's not really doing anything about it. I don't know. This is the very slowest, slowest push crawl that I've seen in a while from a Terran player. He's taken, what, 20 minutes to get from here to here. Yeah, DTs are trying to get stuff done. Hey, look at Goliath, but there's turrets kind of scattered across the middle here, so that's not going to work out. Top right base is going to die. So it's just slow domination and move out here from Leonix. Very patient, very steady, very slow. The carriers decide to suicide themselves into all of the missile turrets and marines and just die. What are you... I... And the, okay, so he unleashes... To kill what? What's he trying to do here?
Okay, I mean, I guess he was trying to snipe this command center, but it didn't even really come all that close to dying, did it? No. It did not. Yeah, so top right, hidey hole, gone. Bloop. 12 o'clock, gone. Blue is slowly, slowly taking more of the map here. LSG just keeps building stuff. <laughs> hey, what's up, Bombo World? Welcome to the stream. And left side base. See, the kind of genius here with LSJ3 is that Leonex is spending all of his time wiping out these adjacent bases. These auxiliary bases, right? And his main base is fine. It hasn't been under attack at all because Blue Leonex is so worried about all the other stuff that's going on. Some good storms here, dude. We are still making Marines. Woof. There's a troll in the Falcon Paladin room in US West. Oh no. This dude has a lot of barracks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 barracks. 16 barracks in a TVP fastest map. What on earth? Shenanigans are shenanigans. Center death and carnage is carnaging. Hey, what's up, Kyle? Welcome to the stream. So, okay, so this is basically Leonix relying heavily on Marines and Goliaths. He's making seven Goliaths at a time and ten Marines at a time. But LSG is pretty good with Storm. He's consistently displayed a solid aptitude for Storm. It's 3-3-3 three, three, three of the Dragoons right now. So the gateway units are all that. The marines are casually at 3-3 as well. Makes a ton of sense. The mech upgrades are at 3-1. With no further armor upgrades coming here either. More scout upgrades on the way here too. Yeah, a little science vessel play EMPing the High Templar would be rad. That'd be super cool stuff. <laughs> hmm. Left side base alive. Got some shield batteries over here too. Ooh. Shield batteries. You ever figure out how this works exactly? Like, you've got these legs that point in to a center crystal that's kind of floating. So, like, what?
considering trying to wipe this out again. No, he says. Good grief. Yeah. Oh, people are... Okay, all right. People are bigger on Leonix now than they were the last round. Got some stasis up. Okay. Stasis going to be fine here, too. This, again, the, he's making progress. The slowest and steadiest progress. One seventy two to one fifty four supply. LSJ casually has thirty two thousand minerals in the bank and twenty three thousand gas in the bank. He should really just be producing a million things all the time, constantly, but he's not. Uh, Bumbo, I'm in the Salt Lake Valley. So, not Salt Lake City exactly, but it's part of the larger metropolitan area. About a million people live in the valley-ish. How's it going? Have some coffee. Phoenix of War. Throwing the Canadian dollars into the chat. Into the super chat. Nice. Thank you, Phoenix. Hope your Sunday's going well. In Canada land. My caffeine of choice is definitely Coke Zero. That's what I'm drinking right now is Coke Zero. Canadian rubles for my falcon. Yeah, so marine tank here. Like, Leonix is kind of styling, right? Anybody who's making this many marines at 36 minutes into the game where the Protoss has Storm is just maybe trying to show off a little bit, right? Look at how many barracks this dude has. Leonix, I think, has finally made some inroads at killing this left side base. Ooh, and the right side base of LSJ. So the blue superiority cost oh, Storm. Look at this tank surrounded in blood. It's like, oh, I'm almost dead myself and I'm surrounded by my dead teammates. What a horror show war is. But he's alive. And he's being kept alive with his dudes. We are speeding this up because Leonix, as the slowest and steadiest, will win the race strategy ever. Nice EMP on those Arbiters. 
However, the science vessel gets stasis itself. God, Marines, even with 3-3 and medic support, aren't super good against cannons. It's just it's full damage against everything. Cannons are good. Yeah, stock market is struggling mightily, Tuna. Some stocks are kind of treading water a little bit. Like, maybe not skyrocketing or anything, but not going down as much as everything else is, you know? J. Schlatt got un unverified on Twitter t trying to predict the royal family's deaths. What are you... What? What are you talking about? Yeah, Critter totally got that replay. We're going to cast it next. Got to see Critter almost defeat Flash. All right, LSJ doing some work up here. Taking away the 12 o'clock that Leodex has repurposed for himself. So we've given up on the carriers, it seems like, at this point. It's going for the Zealot Dragoon. Traditional stuff here with a little storm support, which is great because again, we're making 10 Marines at a time Here is our guy Leonix Thirty-four thousand minerals into twenty-nine thousand gas. The Terran's only at eight thousand and sixteen thousand. Like economically, this should really just be a Protoss win. He can produce more for longer, for infinitely. The thing is, nobody's dropping today. Leonix does not believe in tank drops at all. Even though there are, I mean, seriously, wander in here, boop, drop a couple tanks here, and this dies. This dies. It's a lot harder to drop our guy Leonix because he's done a better job with the anti-air defense. But I really think if Leonix wanted to go for a tank drop, he'd have a lot of success. He's just kind of against it, I guess. He just seems diametrically opposed to it, quite possibly. Beast? Who's talking about Beast? I had to stop... <sighs> temporarily had to stop casting Beast games because every ZVP he plays, he loses. Like, it's consistently... Beast plays a ZVP, he kind of gets outclassed, and that's it, man. I don't know. I like him. He's just not... If he could win a ZVP, I'd feel a lot better about his future as a StarCraft player is all... All right, so Leonix says, my win condition is wander 10 siege tanks in, plant them inside the Protoss base, and collect my win. However, however, can he get there is the question. And you know what? He's made a lot of progress so far. LSJ has been winning battles, but Leonix is winning the war. He keeps pushing closer and closer and closer and closer. Using Marines to take down Arbiters who are not running away from the attacks.
can he do it? Can Leonex with the tortoisey, slowest, most efficient Terran push? Did I say slowest? I meant to say slowest. I think that's it. Remember, when condition is, you show up with a bunch of siege tanks inside the enemy Protoss base and they just die. Which... That's it? Unless the secret carrier tech switch again can win this thing. I don't know, man. These guys don't even have their full complement of interceptors yet. But it is 333 upgrades on the carriers, which is pretty good. And, like, there aren't that many Goliaths here, and they're in a position where they can't hit the carrier bodies. Can LSJ actually kind of save his own butt here with carriers? Yeah, so all the Goliaths are dead. There's not enough Marines here to stop this many carriers. They're an answer to this for sure. But they're not enough to handle this many carriers with these great upgrades. So, sure, LSJ holds. Neat. Well, the thing about our guy, LSJ, having a much bigger bank than Leonix is, once you have over 10,000 resources, it kind of doesn't matter at that point, right? Like, Leonix is at 13,000 minerals. He might as well have 100 million. It's just, he's not really ever going to get through that at this stage of the game. ba ba ba. Yeah, so what? Some gateways died here. Maybe some tech structures died. As the attack slowed here from Leonix, as he may be getting tired. He's got 185 APM. Tanks are out. Marines are out. Goliaths are out. Wraiths are out. He has kind of been making wraiths today, hasn't he? I don't know where they are. Uh, he's only, I think, ever made a couple at a time. And they haven't been amazing. But yeah, carriers out here unsupported. Goliaths, get them. They're not even being microed. Uh, Critter, I think this was from a Lurker. Um, whoever sent this in, I'm pretty sure neither of these players... ...is anybody that we know. So both players are maxed out, but by golly, where is all of the army? More carriers are arriving. Some ground units trying to trickle in here, too. This is... Kind of like watching a slap fight right now, where it's no one's, you know, landing any really solid hits. They're just kind of messing with each other. The Marines are trying to take down the carrier bodies, but they don't have a ton of HP to withstand the interceptor attacks. I just, <laughs> it's a never ending grinder here. I uh, did hear that Artosis is moving to Canada. Yep, he's hoping to be able to cast GSL remotely, but I don't think they've heard an actual response to that yet. Already does live in Korea, but he's moving to Canada.
<laughs> Omar wants to fast forward. You know, well, I mean, what? You think you know the ending already? Is that what we're looking at here? It's a very similar situation to what we had about five minutes ago with Goliath's Marines and tanks inside the main base of LSJ. What he needs to do is kill this. This carrier stuff that keeps showing up and causing problems is annoying. Alright, so is this it? Is this the end of all things of this hour-long PBT? IL is happy about it. Alright, fine. We'll times two this thing. Let's go! Times two? Okay, not enough interceptors. Siege tanks getting hit soft, but... Ah! Yeah, interceptors keep getting wiped out by these marines and then the carriers have to go back and develop more but then the new interceptors die okay this is the slowest most torturous death man Oh, the carrier, oh, new carrier fleet has arrived. Two fleets of carriers is going to be enough to stop this. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing stuff. All right, Leonix. Still making them wraiths. I keep seeing wraiths in the production tab, but then I don't ever see them. They must, like, wander into carriers and die or something. I just don't know. I just don't know. Oh, you're right. LSJ's bank is gone. It's under 10,000. We did it. Holy smokes. Finally killed enough carriers that the bank actually evaporated with replacing the carriers. These are 36,000 minerals not that long ago. And now is it 7,000? Crazy. Absolutely crazy. LSJ's kind of on a rampage right now, guys. You guys. Everyone. Um, LSJ is not actually kind of winning this game, is he? Both players' banks are under 10,000. Um, okay, Storm on the Marines. The Goliath, okay, these Goliaths are scary back here, though. And the turrets are doing some amazing work. And he's kind of storming his own interceptors a little bit here, too, which isn't ideal if you're a Protoss. Hey, Blue Finn. How's it going, Froggy Frog? Suspicious Frog has entered the chat. I need to put Suspicious Frog into this chat. I forgot about that.
Hmm. So holds that off. More carriers are coming in. I don't know. I don't know who's going to win this thing at this point. I thought for sure the Terran has had it for, I don't know, forever, effectively. But Terran's kind of losing steam a little bit. Yeah? Hey, look, a wraith. Bruh. 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 Dude, the cloaked wraith is going to win this game. Just kidding. It got stormed and it's dead now. Unfortunately. Protoss is down to 200 total minerals. This is tight. I, uh, I, I'm still trying to process the fact here that Leonex is continuing to pump Marines at the hour and two minute mark of a PVT. It just doesn't make any sense at all. One sixty seven to one thirty seven supply has our Protoss player who's nobody's believed in. Has he done this? That's true. Not a ton of money for interceptors left either here. Attacking into these missile turrets is really a bad idea for him. Is he making any more probes? He's got 34 workers? I don't know. Maybe that's enough to sustain this. These carriers are just absolute war veterans in here. Four of them. All in various states of getting murderized. There's some chatting happening here. There, added some new emojis.
<laughs> this game is like my divorce. A never-ending B-class movie, says Tour. Ouch. Fair enough. Um. Okay, so LSJ lose at K. Is that it? LSJ lost, loses the carriers, makes some more High Templar, and a Zealot. He's got some Archons in the middle, some Dragoons in the middle here, too. The High Templar are wandering up while they get enough energy for Storm, which they have. Thanks for the subscription, Emily H. and Ashlyn Fidget Queen. Wow, what a name. Go to sleep, says LSJ. GG. Are we not going to get a last battle? It's 200 to 124 supply. Leonix is way up. We want an allied victory, says Leonix. Oh, how nice. Good game. You win. Terran uh, and win. Bluefin becomes a member of the channel at the Zergling level. Excellent. Thank you, Bluefin. Welcome aboard. I got you your frog sus emoji. If you want to start tossing it into the YouTube chat, too, you can. There it is. There's the frog sus emoji. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Bluefin. Much appreciated. Welcome aboard. Okay, look, man. This is over. This is over. Ooh, times two. Storm, storm. Storm, 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 storm. Too many tanks. Too many Goliaths. EMP is getting tossed down. What's up, sap guy? G G. <laughs> uh, okay, that was an epic for sure. Leonix did zero dropping on his opponent to win this game. Zero. 1,197,000 points for LSJ, 1,200,000 points for Leonix. Both produce about 2,000 units. LSJ killed more stuff by about 200, but hey, does that matter in the long run? And then resources here, 292,000 resources spent, 249 spent. What cost efficiency there from the Terran player? Insane. Insanely good. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I think that's it. Barbu. Yeah, nope, sorry Barbu. We can't do the AI this week. Not gonna work out for the time schedule. We'll see if we can slip it in next week there. So let's go battle net. Let's play some games here today let's just do our ye old phantom mode phantom mode one with the phantom mode again come to us west battle net search for a game named falcon the password is going to be sock s-o-c-k it is always sock Yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out here today. This has been great. This has been a lot of fun. That super, super long 1v1 was insane. Trumpinator loves Falcon. Uh, identify. Yeah, okay, fine. That's RJB. Potato Terran's in here, SOS is in here, I'm an occult is in here, Trumpinator is John Doe. Fair enough, dude. Ah, you, what? what? Nope, Destroyer gets Avicatennis' spot, because he was here first. Dave left, I know, what a bummer. Where'd you go, Dave? Did you get dropped? Uh, yeah, Terran did win, Lockie. Definitely yes. Tuna says, what is up, gentlemen? 
Hey, Bjorn Budinger upgrades his membership to Hydralisk level. Oof, Ultralisk. Very happy about that. Ultralisk Uma. Like Uma Thurman, I guess. I don't know. Tuna, no, don't lag out. Tuna. Tuna, no. Oh, okay, good. Whew. All right, so we've got Dead Infested top left, Baby T-Rex, Tuna's top right, Lucky Owl, Trumpinator, RJB is at the south, Potato Terran and SOS. So let's see, our guy, Dead Infested's top left, RJB is here. We're gonna watch RJB for a minute. SOS had a good time with that one hour game, for sure did. Be right back. Maybe, Barbu, we will see. All right, so RJB's opened up two gate, and to the no surprise of anybody, uh, we had multiple people identify as Paladin today, didn't we? Three, which is not great. Trump, so John Doe says Paladin, RJB says Paladin, and Potato Terran says Paladin. Hmm. Interesting. Also, builds, uh, SOS builds a barracks in the middle to kind of block off anyone's attempt from taking the center. That's interesting. I don't know that we've seen someone try this before. This might be a situation where people just get mad at him and kill him because he's messing with the economy of the game, even if he's not a phantom. Tuna's on board. Tuna supports this plan of SOS's to chaos goblin this thing up a little bit. True, Dave C. I think Dave C was the first person to do that kind of a thing. SOS just following in his footsteps. Yeah, new names here, but no new players. I'm pretty sure everybody here has played with us before. Ah, 
So dead infested, being attacked by a lot of zealots. Wow, from cross spawn, three gating it is John Doe. Who is also under attack here by RJB. So RJB is trying to kill John Doe. Alright, that's interesting. Alright, man. So John Doe's in a lot of trouble here. I mean, these are super fast Dragoons out of RJB. He has declared himself as a paladin. So he's killing someone who he thinks is a phantom, obviously, because he attacked dead infested. But it's possible, you know, possible that John Doe is a paladin who is attacking dead infested because he thinks that dead is a phantom. Intriguing. The stutter step micro from RJB is excellent as per usual. Yeah, I mean, these Dragoons from RJB are just kicking butt, taking names. Five kills, two kills, seven kills, four kills. Potato Terran identified as Paladin to start the game. It's true. He did. We have three claimed... Yes, we have three claimed Paladins, Trump. Ex or Tuna, correct. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, so RJB decides that Potato Terran needs to die now after effectively crippling John Doe but not killing him. He still has a Nexus and he still has a couple of workers. Potato Terran says it's not me. Maybe RJB is the Phantom. Maybe he's murdering his biggest his biggest threats as well as he can. You know, if he's Phantom, it would make sense to go after the two other people that declared as Paladin, right? Psychonuts has some thoughts about this. Dude, RJB has some DTs out. Wait, three Paladins? Yeah, there are three Lucky Owl. We talked about this. You gotta pay attention to how many people declare as Paladins. What's up, Jedi Master? Brown. Brown. Tuna. Okay, we got it figured out. So. Yeah, I think this is working. I'm going to send some DTs down and try to make sure that John Doe never comes back from the dead. So, uh, it really feels like RJB is a phantom here. Whether he is or not depends largely on luck, obviously. Yeah, all three across the bottom declared themselves as paladins. Yeah, Lucky Owl's feeling like maybe RJB's the Phantom. Potato's like, yeah. 
He's killing me right now. Yep, good call. True facts, he is. The truest of potential facts, he is. Okay, so maybe he can hold off here. The spider mines are integral to him not dying. His economy is okay for being on one base, I guess. The only question is if somebody's going to bother going after RJB, who's done a really good job of wiping out his neighbors. Actually, I'm surprised. Huh. Potato Terran's really mad because nobody's coming to try to help him. Lucky Owl says, yeah, I guess we're slow. <laughs> that infested is supply blocked. How are you just because you're not making overlords? It's a pretty fast hive, too. Reasonable stuff. Sending zealots in to clear out the spider mines. Doing a great job at that. They're always doing a great job at that. Yeah, look, I mean, John Doe's not dead. John Doe could have been dead. RJB could have finished him off and decided not to. What's up, Umberto? Happy Sunday. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the stream. So, yeah, top side, everyone, no one's attacked anybody, right? Right side's been very quiet as well. Bum, 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 bum. RJB takes a second base. He's got a million gateways. He's really very terrifyingly appearing like maybe he's phantom, but n he's not paying any consequences for murdering his two neighbors at all. They both could be phantom. Yeah, that's the thing. There's just no evidence. <clears throat> There's no super evidence of anything happening here. Of who is what? What's up, Luca? That's right. You're having a great Sunday. John Doe, do you want your natural? Says Lucky Owl. Yeah, he's taking it right now, in fact. Trumpinator continually getting rushed by what's his face? The RJB. What's up, Wilka Villafana? Welcome to the stream. That infested kind of doing stuff, sort of. He's sitting in the middle with his Zerg friend, Tuna. I mean, Protoss and Terran are just taking it to, to each other down here to the south, so whatever. Looks like Potato Terran might actually die. It's been a very slow death. A lot of slow deaths on the stream here today.
All right, Potato Terran is out, and... <laughs> okay, so Potato Terran was a slayer, apparently, or what? What are we... Hey, I need somebody to announce in chat what everybody is when they die. No one's doing that. John Doe getting attacked by... Oh, just dead infested for reasons, I guess. Oh, and Lucky Owl's here, too. Yeah, what was he? He was a paladin. Oh, dude, Potato Terran was a paladin. That makes RJB enemy number one, or he should be. Except everyone's killing John Doe, so that means Brown is Phantom. Except it was Yellow killing... Okay, all right. The science of this is questionable. Tuna understands. Tuna's like, what? Oh my gosh, and he was a slayer. So John Doe was a slayer who told everybody that he was a paladin. That's such a weird thing to do. Revenge. So did it <laughs> Dead Infested got revenge on John Doe for killing him in a previous game, it sounds like. So we've got two people dead. One was a paladin, one was a slayer. The three who claimed were RJB, Potato Terran, and our dude John Doe, two of which are dead now. One of them was a paladin. Yeah, so Brown claimed paladin, and he wasn't. He was a slayer. That's weird. Like, usually... Yeah, that's the thing. It's strange. He claimed paladin, and so he died. Yeah, be careful claiming Paladin if you're not. Yeah, I think John Doe, you died because Dead Infested wanted you dead from a previous game. Oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, oh, I think in Snares got cast on Blue, and now he's mad and going after Dead Infested. It was just in Snares. Says dead. I, wasn't, I didn't do any damage to you. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think it's snares are getting tossed down on blue, and so he opened fire on dead. So dead's just... Guess I forgot to make upgrades as SOS. Was it you? Yeah, he's got a million zero zero wraiths. I, I think he's talking about himself there for sure. <laughs> just claim phantom, says Dave C. Not wrong. Not wrong about that. Oh, so Dave C wanted to leave the game because he wanted to match up against Dead Infested in the next game, and then I moved Dead Infested into a slot. <laughs> okay, that's actually funny. If RJB is a phantom, y'all are in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Alexandru, yeah. A lot of players have developed Carpal Tunnel wrist tendon style issues from StarCraft, 100%. Both in StarCraft 1 and in StarCraft 2. It's been a problem. Whoa, okay. So baby T-Rex, who's playing Terran today, mind you, is just gonna kill Dead Infested straight up. He was just ensnaring you, bro. You're gonna murder him for that? Oh, we're all going into the night. Wait, are we nightising somewheres? Oh, we are nightising somewheres. Why are you attacking me, says Tuna. Okay, all right. Ooh. Oh, they came through irradiated. Oh, that's funny. So his lurkers got irradiated. They came through the night as popped out irradiated. Well, we've got Ultralisks. That'll deal with this no problem whatsoever. Lings are coming out. A couple lurkers every once in a while showing up. I was sending defilers to help you, says Duna. Oh. 
Well, it doesn't really matter. Dead Infested is dead anyway. It's a real solid kind of mech bio combo army coming in from Tuna to wipe him out. Maybe inspired by Leonix in the last game. We're going to make Marines and tanks and, or, and we're going to make Goliaths and science vessels and it'll be great. Baby T-Rex is a party pooper, says the Dead Infested. And he was a phantom. Ah! Wow, okay, so that's one. So Dead Infested trying to sneak it about, but unfortunately ensnared. B got the ire of Baby T-Rex. I'm a paladin, says RJB. I don't know. I really feel like the safest thing for everybody is to wipe out RJB and then deal with the phantom later. Oh, I think we're just taking the gas. Okay, we're just exchanging gas here. That's fine. That's reasonable. Dead infested parasited everybody, so he wins. GG! GG! <laughs> A phantom dies and a hush falls over. It's actually a lot of chatting, though. Just a little long distance mining happening here. Some probes and drones transferring down. Carriers getting a little restless on the left side there.
Just adding more emojis as we're kind of sitting here. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Dad. I didn't really see you as a phantom at all. It's just you ensnared Tuna here and made him mad. <laughs> so he killed you. Yeah, save some money for the Slayers. I agree with that. The Paladin's just taken... Yeah, if a Paladin's taking a ton of bases, they have infinite money. T-Rex is saying it's the RJB. RJB says it's baby T-Rex. What's up, Savior Sword? Welcome back. You want a random units today, Savior Sword? Okay, you got it. RJB says that baby T-Rex needs to die. So here goes nothing. Yeah, Lucky Owl is having conversations when the battle's already happening here. Second recall. Oh, solid EMP on all of these Archons. Some of the Archons, anyway. But Cloaked. Cloaked is a problem, though. Let them kill each other, says Lucky Owl. Yeah, says SOS. Let's do that. Yeah, Archon's not great against Mass Marine. It turns out. Neither are these Dragoons, really. So, I mean, I we wiped out all the supply of Baby T-Rex. So he's probably supply blocked into the ground at this point. But he held on. Baby T-Rex killed everything of RJBs. It's just RJB has infinite money. And, I mean, if he's a paladin, stealing money from the Slayers is a great strategy. Fantastic strategy. Like, maybe one of the best ones, right? Look at RJB's Stargates. Yeah, ton of Stargates coming up here. A little bit dangerous for everyone, I feel like. Yo, says SOS. Well, you got a ton of wraiths. Maybe do something about it. Alright, Lucky L says that RJB needs to die. Let's go. What's up, Real Ultra? This is Phantom Mode, obviously. Go 
Oop, stasis up. Boop. Yeah, attacking into a million cannons is maybe not the best way to go about this with your carrier army. Just a thought about that. Okay. And then our guy, Tuna, did a doom drop on RJB. Okay, so multiple people are thinking it's our guy. It's our guy, RJB. So they're going to try to kill him from multiple angles here. And RJB says, oh, that's it. You lost the game. And he was a paladin. Okay. So who's phantom? Who's sneaking around doing phantomy things? Baby T-Rex is like, it's not me. Lucky I was like, yeah, it is. Let's go. Tuna's like, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I have ideas. I have ideas. Oh, real ultra. I'm sorry to hear that you were sick. I'm glad you're getting better, though. And that... Maybe not 100% better, but getting better is nice. Lucky Owl looks like he's about to open a can on our guy, Baby T-Rex. Maybe. Alright. Oh. So, kind of got it. Okay, so Lucky Owl is attacking Baby T-Rex. Tuna's attacking Lucky Owl, which is weird. Yeah, okay, so Lucky Owl is getting attacked by our Team North guys here, red and blue. It can't be blue, says Tuna. He killed the other phantom. Sometimes you can do that to throw suspicion off yourself. Bot to red. I don't know what that means. So yeah, Lucky Owl is going to get eliminated. He's got a base down here, but Ultralisks have found it. They are fully upgraded, so the cannons aren't going to do much. If Lucky Owl's buildings die... Oh! Okay! Tuna's attacking into white here, into SOS. Is Tuna our guy? I don't... Does Tuna have enough hatcheries to be Phantom? I don't know, but it sure seems like he just identified as such. Either he is... Oh, but... Uh, and then he's away from home. SOS is away from home. Uh, nukes? Oh, and a plague -oo. Where are these nukes landing? Oh, right. Did he nuke his own front door to try to defend against the incoming on -horde, uh, horde? Hey, caramba. This is crazy stuff. Baby T-Rex says, I'm pretty sure that it's Tuna, but I want him to win. Oh, no. Oh, no. Lucky Owl is a dummy because he killed me, says Baby T-Rex. Uh-huh.
SOS is trying to get his revenge with race, but there's enough hiders to shut that thing down for sure. It's not me, says Tuna. It's okay if you are, says Baby T-Rex. <laughs> oh, some buildings down here, though. From Lucky Owl. Interesting. He's not trying to rebuild a home. He's just... Oh, no, he is. But he got discovered. Mm. Is it Lucky Owl? Teal, says Tuna on Toast. Check this action out. Mm. White's got some buildings over here, too, though. He's trying to defend with his Wraith Ball. Did he ever get upgrades for these? Yeah, he got 3-2 upgrades for these. Phantom will always sniff you out. Uh, no Zale. No one's made the red, white, and blue joke. Pretty good, though. Dude, if it's a lucky owl, that's kind of hilarious. All right, if it's Lucky Owl, that's actually kind of funny because I don't think anybody ever accused him. RJB rules. Yeah, these are the better phantom modes than the ones where like the two phantoms die first and no one else is dead. Lucky Owl is just claiming he saved up a bunch of money, but I don't know about that. GG! Lucky Owl taps out, and he was the other Phantom. Amazing. So it's Lucky Owl and Dead Infested, and... Huh. Neither... I don't know that anybody ever really officially accused any of them. I think Baby T-Rex killed Dead because he ensnared his stuff. But that's it, man. Crazy. Huh. And RJB. Oh, RJB. Paladin. Too suspicious. Got killed. But hey, the good guys won anyway, so who needs a paladin, right? Let's see if we can get. I want to Dave C and Dead Infested in the same one here. Brigada B. Kitten, Savior Sword, Psychonauts, Avcatennis. I'm an occult tuna. An RJB, 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 RJB account. Versivo is going to take. Tuna's spot. SOS pops in. Offense, Brugada, Savior, Psycho, Avka, Tennis, Dave C, Versavo, RJB. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. It's a mug. It has Coke Zero in it. It fits about two cans. So it's not like the biggest thing ever, but. Save your sword. Avka Tennis. RJB. Brugada be kidding. Versavo. Offense. Dave C, who's I'm in a cult, and Psychonauts. Got the low mineral count. Let's go. First of all, Phantom. Dave C's Phantom. RJB's Phantom. Save your swords, Phantom. Got it. So everybody declares Phantom in this Phantom mode. Sounds reasonable. I'm a paladin, says RJB. Psychonaut says Paladin. Brugada be kidding says Paladin. <laughs> uh, 
This is great. Multiple people, like way too many people declaring his phantom, way too many people declaring his paladin. Good times. RJB says this base is best. I do like it. The minerals are lined up nicely. Oh, that's a good point. I don't know that RJB is RJB. RJB, is that you? I'm not acting like RJB. But people with their multiple accounts. Who knows? Who knows what they're doing? Pro League Shield Battery, 2v2 starts now. BSL Pro League. Nice. Nice, nice. What's up, Derek Armstrong? Happy Sunday. Doing well today, Derek. Hope you're having a great Sunday. Hope you're here to enjoy the stream. I bet you are. <coughs> Stepping away. Yeah, just something stuck in the throat. I had to go cough it out. Doing fine, Egon. Back. Everything is good and cool. So cool. So, I don't know. I mean, all of the people declaring things I feel like are jokes today. So, who are the declared paladins? I don't know. Okay, so Psychonauts is under attack here by Brugotta Be Kidden. Oh, he says, I think Blue is a phantom. Let's go kill him. So he does. Sees the lair, sees the double Evo. Brugotta Be Kidden has three gates. 
Declares himself a paladin. Snipes down the spawning pool of Psychonuts. Some Hydras have popped out from Psychonuts, but Hydras are kind of worse than Lings against Zealots, honestly. Like, significantly, substantially worse. The Zealots are inside the mineral line, causing all sorts of troubles. Yeah, this is not good. Psychonauts is in a lot of trouble. Lots of trouble right now. Hydralisk Den's getting sniped. Oh no, purple. Dave C's in. Uh, Dave C is just a chaos goblin. He'll do whatever just to cause chaos. So it doesn't necessarily mean he's a phantom, but it, you know, he could be. I don't like RJB, says Havkit Tennis. Uh, I have no units, says RJB. Just building stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, we just decided that Psychonuts should live. Afkatinus unvisioned RJB. I don't like you. Let's get him. Let's get RJB, says Afkatinus. Well, I don't like you, says RJB. So, okay. So everyone's going to try to kill RJB here. Which, you know... Moderately reasonable strategy in general, I feel like. Help! Versivo says we should stop killing RJB, but nah. <laughs> Dave C is attacking Orange now and Savior Sword. Just killing stuff. Carriers are out at seven minutes for RJB. He's five basing carrier. We will lose if he's a phantom. So he's five ba oh, five Stargate carrier? Yeah, okay. Man, killing all these pylons is going to take forever. This is going to be tricky. You need more marines. Just more and more and more and more marines, which are cruising across here for Afkatennis. He has no medics, mind you. He's got a marines. It's yellow anyway, says Dave C again, just throwing more chaos into the chaos pot. He is, says Versavo. How can I be, says Afkatennis. I don't know. Dude, losing that Nexus would be bad. He needs the income. Well, unless he's a phantom. Does he need the income for minerals? Guess we'll find out. The Marines are a major problem here. They're doing great against the Interceptors. Our JB is not even defending his Paladin position anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to not die. I can't type. Our JB trying to hide. Dave C says he's got 7 APM. Maybe. Entirely possible. He's a paladin, says Versavo. How do you know? Says Afka Tennis. It's a good question. Great question. So red and yellow working together to make sure... Oh, shield batteries up. That's exciting stuff. I like it. I support shield battery shenanigans. First of all, he's got 10 BCs, because of course he does. I have one, says Versipo. <laughs> His interceptor count is not happening. These carriers, do they have any interceptors at all? Two, four, RJB Chaos Goblin Shield Batteries, heck yes.
He was a phantom. <laughs> RJV gets killed solely because Avka Tennis doesn't like RJV. And uh, that's it, man. Versavo, you're next. Avka Tennis, man. Just metagaming the crap out of this. Kind of like RJV. He dies. Versavo is real scary. If we let him get up to a million battle cruisers, we'll kill him next. He never takes center, says Lucky Owl. I'm scared. Good point. Versavo never takes center. JV. I mean, yes, you killed him because you don't like him. I think that's pretty much what you said. <laughs> Look, man, a lot of phantom is you get lucky. You kill someone, they're a phantom, you look smart. Man, this mineral line is good. Yep. That's what RJB said about his base, his spawn location here in the top right at the 1 o'clock. Minerals lined up quite nicely. Take my guess. Kill me afterwards, but I gotta fight, says Avka Tennis. Alright, man. Purple, can you ally back? <laughs> okay, says Dave. I'm down. Hmm. Baby T Rex, Avka Tennis are on the list. Hello again, Gita. Mm, looks like he's setting up to go after red here. Are we cool, says Psychonuts? Why is everybody scared, says Dave C. Because it's Phantom. Anyone could be a Phantom. You could be a Phantom. They don't know. That's your stim. And oh, he goes Versavo. All right, here we go. Time for Versavo times. He's got Wraiths, he's got Marines. Oh, the Wraiths are developed specifically to kill battle cruisers, man. Defensive Matrix, temporarily kind of saving. Marines, oh, are the upgrades a thing? 
two one upgrades on these BCs, man. No upgrades on the Wraiths. And one one on the Marines. And then a Stasis comes in from Red. Ah, Stasis comes in from Brugada and says, C Carry on, my friend. Also, there's a nuke on the way. What? Who has nukes? Oh, and then a recall on Versavo 2. And he's... Oh, he is. Versavo! There it is. <laughs> Nuke the middle. Sure, why not? Who was that? I don't rightly know. Versavo's doing the toss down additional starports thing. He very, very, very well could be Phantom here. Avicatennis could have gone two for two in discovering and killing Phantoms today. Ah, the stasis again. Oh, lockdown on the BCs. Phoenix wants more nukes. Alright, so Avkatinis is dead. Terran has cheater stasis. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Who's been nuking? I'm gonna guess. So our guy Dave C is Versavo nuking? Nah, he can't. He very dead. Versavo leaves the game, and he was a slayer. All right, so now Avkatennis is gonna die. He's like, fine. It took my guess. Took my chance. Versavo threw enough of those extra star ports, man. Interesting. Who got nuked? Ah, finding nukes is hard. I don't see any buildings on fire at all. Was it a nuke in no man's land? Like here or something stupid? Might have been. I'm gonna die to Reavers, which is an honorable way to die. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so the Avkatennis execution of which he supports is almost complete. Although, I don't know, he's got like three other bases that are still alive. Oh, did he get nuked? Oh, he's attacking his own stuff, okay. Is he repairing that? No. Okay. It's got to be Dave C that's nuking fools, isn't it? He's got... Yes. Ah, there it is. Our guy, Dave C, man. Run! <laughs>
What good is money to a dead man? It's a great question. <laughs> I am Egyptian, says Avkatinis. Are you really Egyptian? That's interesting. Not many Egyptians play in the StarCraft, I feel like. That makes you cool. Ah. So it's an attack on Dave C and his chaos. Yeah, it sure seems like white is just kind of killing everybody, doesn't it? But red's got his scouts up. Uh, you're going to attack these carriers, Mr. Red? Okay, yes. Stasis up. All the carriers get stasis, and now we can attack his production for a while. I have locked down. Savior Sword says, all right, I will spare you. So you can assist in killing White, who brings in more carriers to the cause, man. Woof, storm going down on these guys, too. Yeah, it's the sound of a lot of carriers dying here, and I think that's the end of the carrier empire. Hydra's Ragoon showing up. The scouts did what they could. They're dead now. Carrier group is under 12. It's only 10, which seems more manageable. Marines here from Avka Tennis are part of the play with their 2-2 upgrades. Another stasis on the carriers, and yeah, all the, I mean, we just might kill all the buildings of white before his carriers die. not know where that nuke was at all, honestly. Dude, lockdown, plague. Pretty good. Yeah, the carriers get locked down. Afghatina says my mission is ended. White is utterly dead. White has been extremely quiet today.
purple is phantom. All right, so fine. We've decided that Dave C is our next guy. Let's take him down. Nuclear launch detected. Feels like a defensive nuke. But is it? Nope. Where is that ghost? He was here. Oh, that's pretty good. Avgatinis, man. He went from go ahead and kill me to I'm just going to make ghosts. Which, okay. That's fair, I guess. Nuclear launch detected. Nuclear launch detected. Ah, that's a recall in on the Dave C. <laughs> Just killed a group of dragoons and hydras there. All right, Red's had enough. Red has had enough. Hey, Frogsus. What's up, member of the channel whose name I can't pronounce at all? Arbs attack two, and they're definitely support. Alright, so Dave C. dies either because he's a phantom or because he's a chaos goblin. These are the options here. Ah, the scouts doing some work, as they will do.
Hmm. Save your swords in here, taking down Brugada be kidding. He's a paladin, don't do it. On the other side, I got some attacks from Brugada. Okay. Maybe it's save your sword. Down on the Arbiters. Okay, so it's just the fight of red and orange right now. Save your sword. It's like, should I stop trying to kill red? And nobody's really saying much. Avkatinis is specifically saying no. Offense left the game, but he's been dead for a while. Not a paladin, says Savior Sword. RJB says, I know who the Phantom is. We're going to do a random units free for all next to wrap this thing up. Our guy Psychonuts back from the dead. He was killed, man. He was killed. And he's going to go right after Savior Sword here. Arbiter's coming in to assist. Stasis on the Hydras would be interesting here. Oh, he does. Tossed out a Stasis. Largely catches Overlords, though. But he's got enough Dragoons to save him there anyway. Yeah, Brugada's here to fight against Savior Sword 2. Red and Orange, Blue's against him, but I don't know. Orange is able to defend himself pretty effectively. He's coming in here, just attacking DTs. An Ultralisk goes down pretty quickly there, too. I don't think it's a free-for-all, Savior Sword. I think Avkatenis and Psychonauts and Brugada be kidding are trying to kill you. Those guys were plagued for a minute because they're red. Not plagued, just nice red accents on their wings there. Man, lock down Dragoons. Not something you see all the time. Kind of fun stuff. 
Okay, so the interesting Brigada Bikidin's like, well, there's not a ton of anti-air here, but enough to scare him off. He's got three, three, two upgrades, which is, I mean, basically as strong as you can get. Dave C wants Red to die. I'm not sure that's going to happen today. Never lie with my paladin status, so save your sword. Leave me alone. You gotta start executing other people. We're gonna win this thing. Lockdown Orbiter. Lockdown Dragoon. Lockdown Dragoon. Lockdown Dragoon. Wings are like, ooh, completely unable to help themselves. Dragoon. I like it. Let's go. On a lockdown, man. Hey, 104 likes. We got there. Thanks, everybody, for helping. Hit that like button. Much appreciated. So, Marines and ghosts on the day here. From Avcatinus. Zealots from Brugada in on top of the production here. This is how you kill a paladin. Is <laughs> killing their production. If you're killing a paladin or if you're killing a phantom, they can have all the money in the world. If they don't have the supply available or the units to rebuild, then, uh, yeah. Avgatinus, man. My gas is not going up, he says. I don't know, man. Avgatinus is a little bit suspicious here. Lucky Owl remembered to hit that like button. Hooray! So no more Arbiters. They're getting locked down anyway, so I'm not sure how much value they're providing regardless. The lockdowns are really fun, though. Gotta say, some really excellent, excellent lockdown here today. Reavers are here to defend against this largely Hydra Ghost Marine Army, which is a really fantastically smart position. Tanks moving into position here, too. A siege tank in siege mode could be really useful here. But instead of just kind of bouncing around, Avcatenus isn't telling it to do much, other than a move, I guess. And it's trying, but it can't get into attack range of anything, so it's bouncing back and forth. It really just needs to set up in siege mode here. Nice stasis on a bunch of marines and ghosts. You don't often see marines and ghosts in stasis, yeah? And are you? You often, often do not. Hey, what's up? Yoel Clemente. Saludos. <laughs> From Peru. Save your sword. GG's out. He's trying to hold. He tried to hold. He can't hold anymore. Tuna leaves too. Save your sword leaves. And it was save your sword. Or it was Tuna. Let's find out. Let's find out here in the in the resources tab. Oh, you're saying hello to Artosis? Yeah, I'm not Artosis. 
But maybe you are a friend of Artosis? Save your sword. Insisting upon your paladin status. Yeah, save your sword and RJB way down here. Good. So two interesting phantom matches. Why did Psychodots kill me? It's a great question, man. Don't have an answer for you. Okay, let's move on into our uh, random units. <laughs> random unit battle free for all. Cha-cha. Password is suck. Let's go. Let's go. Should have killed Red, said Dave C. I guess. Let's see why not. Save your sword once. Ready to roll out once. Dead infested once. Save your sword once. Call me Zale once. RJB once. Let's go. Hey, what's up, KSAG? Didn't miss the stream. All right, cool. So here we've got Dead Infested, Tuna on Toast, Save Your Sword, Ready to Roll Out, Zale, SOS, and finally, Avcatinus. So, Random Unit Battle is... Basically, as you kill stuff, you get money, and with that money, you build units, but you can only get it randomly. There's different tiers. You buy a unit from the tier that you want, and then it just spawns randomly, right? There are heroes. But I don't see any right now, because it's pretty darn early in the game. But you can buy heroes as well. Yeah, so the chaos is real. Let's go ahead. I'm going to step away for just a second, but we're just going to watch the chaos. You lose when your base dies, but it's got 10,000 HP and a ton of armor. And you can really only do about one damage to it every attack. If you're interceptors anyway. So that means it has like at least six or something armor on it. All right, so I'm going to step away, let this chaos happen, and uh, I'll be right back.
Oof. Okay, so in general, these can take a while solely because these bases have so much armor and so much HP. But at this stage, who's ahead? Who has the most stuff? Tuna. Tuna's got 18 supply of stuff here. What does also make these last a little bit longer, too, is that anyone can buy a nuke. Or maybe you just get a nuke. I can't remember if you have to purchase them or not. But you nuke and it wipes everything out. So if you're down to your last unit and a giant army is hammering away at your base, you just call down a nuke. Set everybody back to zero. Make them rebuy their stuff. Oh, that ghost spawns, gets a lockdown, and then dies to the carrier. So are there any hero units out yet? Ultralisk, Archon, Battle Cruiser. No, not really any heroes out yet. Mutalisk, Carrier, Carrier. Interesting. I don't have a Garanthothor or like a Hunter Killer or like a Kerrigan or anything. Everybody's just kind of interested in going for the basic random spawns here. But yeah, it just prioritizes microing and there's luck. There's obviously a ton of luck involved here as well. Lockdown, good unit. Finally, locked on wears off, but the carrier's taking so much damage, it just dies anyway. The Vulture throws down a few spider mines before it dies, because it's gonna die. Sure. Good call. Just throw down spider mines as soon as you spawn. A little bit of acid spore play down here to the south. Cool. Yep. Just irradiate. Irradiating a single Hydralisk is fine, because the chances that any of these units survive forever is just not very high at all. Save your sword under attack. <laughs> mm, base down to 2,000 HP, not good. Base down to 800 HP, extra bad. Is that Warbringer? No. But 100 damage per swing ignores a lot of armor. They just get infinite. Yeah, they get infinite scarabs. Two heroes, can't shoot air, says Zale. Yeah, rough stuff, man.
Ah, calls down the nuke to stay alive. Maelstrom play there from our guy Dark Archon. Queen Scout. Ah! Infested Terran spawns. Ooh, a feedback on a Defiler. Nicely done there. That Dark Archon has a kill. Hot stuff. I mean, it's no HP at all. About 30 HP at the moment. Not ideal. Hey, thanks for subscribing, Slashmon1. Welcome to this channel. Just doing some Sunday stream shenanigans here, doing some use map setting stuff. It's called Random Unit Battle, where you buy random tiers of units. Oh, there's Jim. He's alive, somehow. Oh, he's got six armor. Okay, well, the Ultra Lisk doing 30 damage doesn't care about that all that much. Yeah, taking big reaver shots to your base is super duper bad. Hey, Artanis is out. What's up, Artanis? I'm gonna try to take down this carrier by himself. Interesting, uh... He does a ton of damage, but also the carrier can micro. And Artanis is taking hits the whole time. Ooh, Artanis gets wiped out by the carrier. Also some assist there from a Hydralisk, I assume, too. The Scourge did not involve themselves there, and they probably should have, although they might be very new. JB wants high latency, understandably so. Dark Swarm gets tossed up. It doesn't protect the base from anything. Well, the Ultra hammering away. Okay, going after RJB here. We got ready to roll out in the mix. We got Savior Sword in the mix. An ultra pop. Okay, so an ultra pops oof, for RJB, and then a nuke gets called down. I do feel like we need to edit this map a little bit to where you get fewer nukes. Like, a nuke is a fine concept, but. Mm. I love the single Mutalisk that you get. It's like, are you serious? A lot of units are good if there's just one of them, but Mutos are not that ever. RJB says, is there a bug? What happened, RJB? Something terrible happened. This base is down to 800 HP for our guy, Zale. <laughs> Who does? Mad, I guess? I don't know, man. His base is super healthy. You're fine. Afkatennis is in here just kind of wrecking it, though. I mean, Firebat's not doing any damage. DT is. And Ultralisk is, for sure. Spawn Brutaling on an Ultralisk. Nice. Don't see that a lot, either. That was some pretty cool stuff. Hey, 
This game really doesn't want me to have any anti-air, says Zale. <laughs> you know, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it simply doesn't. Another spawn broodling. Oh, there's your nuke. Mind control on an Archon. That's pretty cool stuff. Where does that come from? RJB's Maddie's getting teamed up on in a free for all. It's a free for all. It's a free for all. Zale GG's out. Yeah, he's done. Archon only useless unit. Oh, and RJB gets knocked out here too. RJB is just mad about the RNG. You know, I get it. The RNG is definitely an annoyingness and can be. Save your sword. At 18 supply, Tuna and Afghatin is still in it as well. Ready to roll out. Just kind of building some forces here, but you got to kill stuff to get more money to buy things is the whole thing about this. Ah, getting an Overlord stinks. I mean, at least it's a detector, but man. Nuke. <laughs> How's it going, music with John? Happy Sunday. We're just doing some UMS shenanigans here. It's a random battle. Random unit battle. Free for all is what it is. <laughs> Infested Terran shenanigans. I love it. Ah, takes a reaver shot, explodes. Whose base is in the worst position? Really healthy. Pretty darn hurt there for Savior Sword. Really healthy and really healthy. Okay, so actually this one too. Afka Tennis' base is super healthy as well. One nuke says tuna. Like, well, if I got more of them, might as well toss them out. Tuna calls the GGs. Where's Tuna's base? I left purple alone because he was fighting RJB, and this is what I get. Oh, he's right here. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Free For All, man. You show mercy, you get no mercy in return. Nuke! You get 87 nukes, apparently. Sheesh. So yeah, it's just random unit battle free for all. So you kill stuff and get money. You use that money over here to buy a tier of units. And from that tier, you get a random unit. Sometimes you get real unlucky. Sometimes you get lucky. Like getting an overlord is a bad thing unless something that is cloaked is attacking you, right? 
Tuna, and you have to protect your base, which has 10,000 hit points and a lot of armor. And once that's done, you are done. Yeah, what's fun about it is you just get individual, uh, like, weird compositions, weird battles. Valkyries versus Devourers versus Battlecruisers and Carriers and, like, a Vulture's down here for some reason and an Ultralisk pops. Like, you just get weird interactions between units that you never really ever get. Infested Terrans. Ooh. Gets a big hit on that base. Tuna with the GG. All right, who's under attack next? Well, ready to roll out's getting attacks from two directions right now, which is not good. Doesn't really bode well in general. But also, our dude SOS has left his base entirely open, and the other green player, Abkatinis, is just going to go ahead and mash on it for a while. Uh, Blue's in here to attack as well, I guess. Interceptors are cheaper. What's up, Green Wave? Happy Sunday. Tuna says, if I'm going to die, it'll be to the goat, Avkatinis. Fairly undefended base here from Savior Sword has a Defiler and a Valkyrie here, which isn't going to be good against the Archon at all. But the Reaver is pretty good, but also taking massive hits. Oh, but wins anyway. Reaver wins that battle. Is this mode or normal? Uh? Spider Mines are free. Uh, I don't actually know how Interceptor buying works. I think you just get Interceptors. Kind of like Reavers just get Scarabs. I'm, watch, he's going to shoot one and I still have 10. Shoot. Yeah, so he still has 10. So I'm pretty sure that if your Interceptors die, they just automatically show up again. I don't know. I, just, I don't think you have to spend money on that stuff in this version, in this UMS. Devourer Goliath versus ah, Reaver Dark Archon. Like, again, crazy stuff, man. Free real estate. Enemy gets money, but you won't get stuck with Ling's Medic and Corsair. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, micro matters a lot here too. Because your units are so weird, you have to know how to micro them.
And if you just don't have detection and a DT shows up, you're going to have a bad time. You do get a scan. <laughs> so that's nice. You can't get completely messed up just because you didn't roll a detector at all, right? You got scans available over here on the left side somewhere. So I don't know where. I've never actually played this. I've just watched people play it and kind of tried to commentate it a little bit. Green and purple, why are they fighting, says Tuna. I don't know, man. Oh, blue and purple shouldn't be fighting. Ooh, a play on your base. That's new. Favorite UMS for Green Wave, RPGs, and Zone Control, and Tower Defenses. Have I ever done a Zone Control? Might have to do a Zone Control. <laughs> Ready to roll out. It's just like, ah. DT. Bringing that base down to its knees. So it's free for all. So the goal of this game mode is to be the last person standing. You kill everybody else's base and you're the winner. So there are four bases, three bases left. A couple of them are in worse situations than others. Yeah, he's got like 8k HP. I agree. Tuna agrees. Ready to roll out. His, uh, calling out a snitch for that. Avenge me! Everybody's retreating to their own corners here. There's a lurker out. DT making a beeline. Sell it up here for Afkatinis. I don't know what it's for, but yeah, Archon, Dark Archon, Ultra Scout Carrier Queen, Marine. <laughs> yeah. Artanis Scout, not invincible, but hits pretty hard, nevertheless. See, the trick about this is when you're moving out to attack somebody else, it leaves you wide open to getting backstabbed, which is how a bunch of people have died here today, but, you know, it's the game mechanic, so what do you do?
<laughs> I love this lurker. Just like, I'll get you. Stop dodging my spines. Ooh, a spider mine lay next. Okay. Killing a lurker with a spider mine. That's a pretty fun move. Like that one a lot, actually. Duked. Too many nukes. Too many nukes. Uh, yeah, Green Wave. My handle back then was Falcon, straight up. Bought the game in 1998. Huge Warcraft 2 fan with my friends from high school, and then in a gaming magazine we saw a preview for StarCraft, and we were like, holy smokes, this looks amazing. So the day it released, we went to Target, bought a copy of StarCraft, went home, burned it to eight CDs, gave everybody a copy, and then played LAN for a long time at a friend's house who had that set up. And yeah, Falcon's been my handle. My handle was Falcon for games like Descent and Terminal Velocity and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter before StarCraft showed up. So yeah, Falcon is basically eternal at this point. Dude, Archon Firebat is just not a fair fight at all either. Oh, Battle Cruiser Tank also not a fair fight. Dark Archon Mind Controls. Ooh, the Battle Cruiser which cancels the Yamato. Scourge connect on him. Archon gonna die to this. Under a thousand HP. Oh, a Maelstrom on the Zealot to try to stop him from finishing off the base. Not good. Not good at all. Hydra says, get out of here, Wraith. And no, the Lurker says, you get out of here. I got two kills. Ooh. Mind Control backed his battle cruiser. <laughs> so this guy was green, got Mind Control purple, and is now green again. Which is fantastic. Beautiful ensnare with a red dark arc on here, the red and the green complementing each other quite nicely. Got a guardian fighting again. Single guardians are kind of bad. Like single spellcaster is great, right? Single dark archon, great. Single carrier, great. Single BC, great. But a lot of stuff that you only get one of is just horrible. <laughs> KSEG. Hey man, I got it from the Korean streamers, man. Those guys see a plague and they go nuts. I saw that and I was like, well, I guess I should go nuts as well. When in Rome, huh? Nuke. Get under 7,000 HP on this thing. Let's go. Best offense ugh, is a good defense. And best defense is a good offense. Ah, an 
Age of Empires fan. Yeah, I had friends who were big Age of Empire fans. They like StarCraft too. I think they like StarCraft more, but they're definitely into AoE more than I was. Cheese is how to play StarCraft. <laughs> you know, you could cheese your way to pretty high ranks in StarCraft. If your cheese is good and well executed, you can get a lot of success with it. There's a dude I know in StarCraft 2 who cannon rushes his way to GM every once in a while. Just like the highest possible rank. I mean, you're not going to win professional tournaments cannon rushing every game. But, you know, you can win enough ladder games to get up there too. Mm, a plague on the base. Fantastic. A lonely, lonely, hallucinated vulture trying to take down... How did this guy die? Nuke? I don't think so, no. A lot of stuff here is from ready to roll out. Base at 5,000. Oh, done. Okay. Save your swords out. So all the, it's a 1v1? No. Yeah. 1v1 now going to be between ready to roll out and Avkatinis. Avkatinis is kind of our free-for-all champ. He's a somewhat of a favorite in these. Not that he wins every free-for-all. Yeah, I think nukes are just set. You just have a certain number of nukes at the end. You don't get any more for killing. That'd be dumb. Ready to roll out says he only ever had one nuke. That's interesting. Maybe it is based on kills. Huh. I'd rather maybe they just be set. Everyone gets two or something. Maybe one. I think everybody getting one I'd be all right with. Tennis's base in tr Oh, are we base racing? Oh, shoot. We're kind of base racing here. Well, irradiating an ultra is not enough to kill it. Also, okay. Irradiating a zealot. Maybe enough to kill it, actually. It is based on kills and deaths. Okay. True thing, Jeff. Nuke up 2,900 HP there, 4,400 HP out there on green. Pretty good army. Guardian, Lurker, Ghost, Arbiter is interesting. Oh no, Queen mm, Queen Reaver Overlord for ready to roll out. Not hot. Maybe locked. Yeah, locked down. Oh, no, oh, locked down but dead. Oh, coming home it is an Ultralisk though. Little cracklings, fully upgraded. Blah, 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 blah. Hate stasis. Everybody hates them. Some stasis. It's true.
Mind control is getting good stuff. Yeah, 1v1 shenanigans here. Hmm, unexpected angle, perhaps. back on a queen to take it out. That is a brutal way to go. Base down to 2,000 HP. Going fast. That Arbiter providing cloak is nice, but the Arbiter's leaving, which allows the Guardians to finish off. Oh, never mind. The Guardian's here to attack the base, too. Right on. Subscribing, Do Hyung Kwan. Appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Happy to have new subscribers here always. <laughs> ah! The Reaver gets the win! Whoa! Takes down Afghatinis' base. I did not expect. Wow. Ready to roll out gets the win there. He's won a free for all before, too. So not an entirely unexpected outcome there, but still to take down Afghatinis is a bit of an upset. Yeah, getting a Reaver at the end there is amazing. Afghatinis made the most, killed the most, lost the most. Ready to roll out was like third across the board there. Amazing. Reaver stuff. Reaver's good. Reavers are really amazing in this, especially if you're getting hits off on the base. All right, good. So that is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another Sunday Brood War stream. Again, send me your replays to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Brood War. We'll get them into the folder. We'll cast them next week. We are doing it next week, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern, every single Sunday. And then, you know, play some UMS, play some maybe some free-for-alls and maybe some team games, some fastest map after that. And yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you for the super chats, especially here from Phoenix of War and Adam Q. Appreciate it. Bjorn upgrading his membership. We got Bluefin becoming a member. Ah, good times. Super, super good times. So thanks everybody. Thank you, Psychonauts. Hope everybody else has a good week as well. Thank you for doing Chaos Goblin stuff, Dave C. And until next time, as always, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching, and above all, you take care of yourselves. Goodbye.